Alrighty, let me know if anyone's here and if you can hear me. I don't have a Diet Coke can today. I opened it about half an hour ago. So hopefully, if anyone is here, you can forgive me. Hello, Oak Tree. Hello, Splitten. Thank you, Penguin, for the 40-month resub. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hello, Box Tofu. Ataki. Oh, no, it's Mango Fett. Pirate Idealist. Third World Weed. Addy Darling. Zarks. Tall Bird. Transcendent Gauss. Abyssal Spirit. Dr. Mothman, Heat of Milk Wang, Trinus underscore. What happened 30 minutes ago? I opened the Diet Coke early, so there wasn't a can at the start. Hello, No Nut. Hello, 40 Fire 102. Hello, I Like to Paint. Fibical. Sanctus Even. Danky Brain. I'll never forgive you. That's okay. Hello, Weisman. Hello, Tired Sloth. What's going on, fellas? Hello, Linux. Hello, Golden Plato. Draconite. How does one eat off of niche Steam games? Well, I'm going to show you how tonight. Hello, Just a Robot Mom. Broham. Hooey. I, it is so fucking humid today. It was raining like it was a biblical fucking flood yesterday. I thank you, Selicin, for the 72-month resub. I appreciate it. I thank you, Nerda, for the two-year resub. Going to the store to buy a can to get my opening sound fix. Hello, Charizard, Gralix, Aetherius, Moon Watchin, Chump Cump, Lucid, Sir Clud, a Japanese name. Thank you for the 39 month resub. Appreciate it. Have four days off for doing nothing but playing video games and destroying my sleep schedule. You playing that RuneScape, brother? That's what everyone's playing now, right? Hello, Scully Sully. Hello, Butters. Hello, Ark. Heard, uh, you know, there's a, there's a dearth of new video games coming out, so everyone's flocking to RuneScape again, right? Right? Been playing RS3 for the past week. You need to get in our guild, playa. Definitely that, not the dragon dog. Yeah, I figured everyone would be playing that. You know, I thought about... I've been in Oklahoma all week. I just got back, like, late last night. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, Dragon's Dogma came out. So maybe I should just wait, like, another week. <laughs> the fucking stream. Because that's all anyone is going to be talking about for, like, at least a week. Hello, Dirty Dan. Hello, Half Talon. Sushi, Kiyabusa. Dragon's Dogma, 80 microtransactions for a single-player game is kind of funny. I heard that the microtransactions are, like, completely unimportant. It's kind of like Monster Hunter microtransactions and people are getting heated over nothing. But I haven't really heard anyone talk about the game other than microtransactions and performance issues. I don't think I've actually seen a single person... <laughs> talk about the game itself so maybe that's because everybody's enjoying it and there's nothing wrong with it and it's a perfect masterpiece so they can't pull themselves away to discuss it hello computerless citizen limp launches are always so sad it has performance issues so skipping it for now is probably a good idea well i didn't really have any plans on playing it one way or another uh, hello lunar chaos not really my cup of tea i didn't like the first one enough for like a day one by of the second i'm glad people are excited for it but i just you know i've been playing runescape <laughs> that's what i've been doing dude just been playing some rooney took a week off work to play it that's good that's good i hope it's good capcom would pull another rug with wilds tolo does love the runescape i do love my runescape it's like the only fucking thing i play now I added a lot of rats to the rs3 clan well thank you the people complaining about the microtransactions or people not playing it because once you play, you see all the shit you can pay money for. I mean, I acknowledge that, but I still think that people are allowed on principle to be upset about microtransa microtransactions blah, in a $70, $80 game, regardless of how consequential they are. Yes, I'm aware that that was apparently a thing in the first game, and you're kind of an idiot if you buy the Dragon's Dogma 2 microtransactions. But, you know, I can't really begrudge anyone for being upset that they're included at all, even if they're inconsequential. Um, it's a matter of principle. I think so, too. I think the cat is out of the bag with that one, though. Like, this, they're in Monster Hunter, too. They're in Rise and World, and I play those games, and I've never bought a microtransaction for either of them. But I don't like them in those games, either. Even if it's just, like character swaps or other useless shit you can just do with cheat engine 
Hello, Riel. Back on that Stardew grind. Yeah, I heard the new update's coming out soon. One of the curses of being someone who enjoys modded games is whenever a game is updated, you have to wait like an extra half a year for all of the good mods to be updated to the new version. Thank you, Avianer, for the 62-month resub. I appreciate it. Hello, Mio Streamer. How's it going? Well, I just got back from Oklahoma City for my sister's birthday. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't had enough RuneScape this week because of it, so I went really hard. I woke up at, like, 7 in the morning today to play <laughs> RuneScape, so that's how my day's going. I'm back on the uh, diurnal sleep schedule. I'm waking up at literal old man hours like six seven in the fucking morning i ended up uh at one point in the airbnb I, I woke up at like fucking five in the morning and was just watching king cobra on their tv so hopefully the next person who stays there will look at the search history and watch some king cobra jfs mountain of mush uh cooking videos hello kid what's up dude give her your best birthday song she didn't ask me how was your trip it was all right it was, uh, I enjoyed it, but it was mostly big to do something nice for my sister. I personally wouldn't pick Oklahoma as my first destination, but there are a few funny things that happened. Um, I sprained my ankle or rolled it or something. I don't know. I, I fucked it up on a curb and now I'm like walking, you know, that one image of like the little kid with the glasses in like a dark disco doing some bizarre dance. That's kind of how I walk right now. <laughs> I have to, to walk like a fucking freak because it hurts a lot. Hello, Midnight Note. Does Oklahoma even have any notable features? Well, the most surprising thing for me is when I thought of Oklahoma, I didn't exactly think liberal, you know, left, blue, Biden, LGBT. Those were not words that I had associated with Oklahoma at all. But, you know, I got kind of dragged along to go shop at some some stores some weird ass stores in oklahoma city and there was one where i saw a book called unfuck your eating and i decided to no wait you don't understand yet raider i'm getting to it i i looked at this unfuck your eating book something like, oh shit i'm on a weight loss journey maybe i should you know skim through this and see what it has to say maybe i can pick up like a they get on the right page and get a useful tip and i managed to skim to the chapter that was like body negativity and why like wanting to lose weight is anti-black anti-queer anti-lgbt and i didn't realize it was that kind of book so i just looked at that and kind of was like holy shit what <laughs> i thought thought it was gonna be about like counting calories or some shit not counting microtransactions so i didn't really expect that uh i would i've fuck and then i looked at the rest of the books on the rack and it's like how to be the best ally ever and i'm like wait holy shit you would never see something like this in texas like i live in dallas and i've never seen anything like it it's not a bad thing necessarily, but I just didn't realize, you know, I thought it was going to be like Texas. Where the city dwellers are more liberal, but they're not really like leftists, you know, they're liberal in the same way that like Joe Biden is a liberal. The fucking woke virus. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I don't. The, the woke shit is stupid. Um, honestly. I personally, like, if someone starts using the word woke non-ironically to describe things in a conversation, I kind of check out of that one mentally because I know it's not going to be productive whatsoever. But um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm not sure I agree with the premise about losing. Like, I didn't read it. So maybe if I did, I would I would get, like, the full picture and maybe I'd agree. But, like, the, the opening statement caught me off guard. Trying to make my pilgrimage plans to queer meccas. Is Houston still queer? I've never really been to Houston. I have no idea. Just that section of the store not open. I don't know, dude. It was an entire fucking strip mall of this stuff. It's very hipster. Very. It's very different. Like I'm. I'm sure rural Oklahoma isn't like that. But um, it was definitely uh, different than Dallas. How is Ramadan going for you? Well, I had sushi today. I ate an absolute shit ton of spicy tuna. 
Um, so it's going pretty well, I would say. How does that help you lose weight, though? Um, if I had to guess, it was it was going to go into a thing about like body positivity and how certain demographics in like America eat differently than I guess a quote unquote traditional white diet. And so they tend to have more pounds or maybe their genetics lend them to gaining weight and that doesn't make them less beautiful and it's natural and there's nothing bad or unhealthy about it. Um, I've seen reasoning like that before, but I can only speculate because I didn't read the rest of the book. Hello, Mihawk. Hello, cool. Hello, clever Irish potato. I literally like, I don't mean this to be confrontational or raining on anyone's parade, but I could not care less about Dragon's Dogma 2, brother. Um, I played RuneScape for like 10 hours straight today. That's how big into Dragon's Dogma I am. Hello, Silver Fox. Hello, Loaf BR. I'm glad people seem to be enjoying it, but it's not uh, it's not my scene. I think I learned from the Armored Core release that like I really don't think... I can get away with playing like triple A games of any variety, even if I wanted to. And I don't even want to play this one. So uh, no interest in it on or off stream. Been playing OSRS? Hell yeah. I've been playing RuneScape 3. I'm stuck in the casual one for idiot Care Bears. Losing weight for the right reasons thing? Maybe, but I don't understand how that correlates with like blackness and LGBT. That's like, I can understand like uh, you shouldn't develop a eating disorder and become anorexic and stop eating. But I, I legitimately don't know. Would you play it if it was a dying old man's wish? Probably not. Probably not. I don't think I would care that much. Um, I'm stuck in the RS3K hole. I'm halfway to 99 mining and smithing. Hell yeah, dude. I went from 74 prayer to 81 today doing quests. Hello, Ron and Mew. I'm on that quest grind. I'm trying to uh, finish them all. Started old school RuneScape six hours later. I forgot I exist. Well, I'm not advocating for old school right now. Old school RuneScape is fantastic, but I'm currently playing RuneScape 3. Did you hear about N Kate Middleton? A little bit. I know there's been a conspiracy about her not being seen, and I saw that she announced she had cancer today. Um, Banjo. Banjo, stop eating that. Bad boy, go lay down. Is RS3 any different mechanics-wise? Yeah, it's very different from uh, OSRS, that's for sure. OSRS is pogging off right now with Varlamore. Yeah, Osiris was telling me that you get a quiver where you have to do like 12 Inferno completions or some shit. <laughs> to max out the Inferno. Or, or rather, I think it was like... The new version of the Inferno, like you have to beat the Colosseum or whatever like 12 times in order to upgrade a Quiver minorly. Um, I, I li I'm liking RuneScape 3. 12? Okay, okay. Like a dozen times. It's 50 clears. Oh, my mistake. See, I just, I don't want to do that. Like, <laughs> I don't really want to do that, dude. Like, one of the things I'm really enjoying about RS3 is there's an absolute shit ton to do, and there's not that much repetition yet. Eventually, there will be, I'm sure. But at the point I'm at, I'm, uh, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. OSRS, well, I'm... In RS3, it's going to be that way, too. It's just they've had, like, an extra however many years of development to just, like, uh, put whatever they want in the game without having to go through, like, player polls or whatever the fuck, right? 50 clears, 1,500 round ones, or 100 million hunter experience in a new hunter mob. Well, that just sounds brilliant. That sounds super exciting. I don't know. Like, this is going to be one of the most casual things I've ever said, but I feel like RuneScape OSRS panders way too much to, like, the hardcore people. I like grinding... And I like challenging things, but I'm not really sold on the idea of doing extremely challenging content for hundreds of hours in a row. Um, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really know if I want to do that. Um, I'm more of a one and done kind of guy. I uh, it just doesn't sound that exciting to me. The item can be bought on the GE for 111 GP. It's purely an iron tax. I got gotcha. you. We went to the zoo in Oklahoma City. Um, and one of... Have you ever thought that you were just like a complete idiot? Like you get into a conversation 
and like 10 minutes later you think of the perfect comeback the perfect thing to say the perfect uh own f to completely dominate a conversation thank you king vanta q for the 57 months i appreciate it thank you very much hello pit panther hello duckworth hello val we were looking at the lions and they were eating like it was lion feeding time and one of the lions was sitting there sleeping and i'm sitting there just kind of like zoning out just enjoying the view and i hear a shrill voice around five feet to the right of me oh the male's sleeping typical lazy bum man or something to that effect and i i was just like okay i'm just gonna like smile and like nod my head and yeah a typical man yeah yeah that's a normal thing to say when looking at lions and then i heard a mechanical whirring and i thought wait a minute and i looked over and it was like this huge woman in one of those mobility things and i realized that i had i should have said yeah, he should get one of those scooters like you. And then he his life would be much better. And I didn't say that. And I fucking, I hate myself for it. Why didn't I say that? Why did I just sit there and like kind of do nothing? Like, it was perfect. She set herself up for it so fucking hard. And like, I, I've dropped the fucking ball. I hate myself so much. I thought when you heard a whirring, you were going to say you turned around and it was claptrap. You fucked up. I did. I did. I'll never live it down. I feel like she might have tried to run you over after that. That would have been funny. That would have been content. <laughs> that would have been great, dude. Hello, Pop-Tart. Would have been like Mobility Mary Mark II. I just think of it as being nerfed IRL. It's because I'm like just zoned out like 90% of the fucking time. And I also... One of the things that sucks about being nocturnal is whenever anyone wants you to do something, you have to like completely do like a 180 on your sleep. So I stayed up like all fucking day and I had been awake for like a gorillion hours and I was about ready to just fall the fuck asleep. I think I slept for 14 hours when I finally did go to sleep. And uh, yeah, not on my A game. Gotta, gotta make sure that I get the sleep arrangements in order beforehand so I can be ableist at the zoo. You're going to say that the lion was mechanical or some shit? No, dude, but I couldn't believe it. Like, I don't know... I don't know what would possess someone to just say something like that when seeing a sleeping lion. Like, what kind of... I, I, I just genuinely hope that there's never a point where I see, like, a woman animal doing something weird and i'm like ah typical women you know <laughs> what kind of miserable fuck do you have to be to see a lion and and like get that out of it hello sif sif and banjo are both in here so there might be some minor dog bickering do you think they see th they say that when they see house cats sleeping i have no idea I just, I like watching the lions, although that's really a lie. Like, I honestly don't give a shit about lions. My favorite thing that I saw at the zoo was uh, Red River Hogs. Those were awesome. I don't give a shit about big cats. Like, I feel like I'm damaged because everyone's like, oh my god, a tiger. Oh my god, a lion. I've seen a million of these things in every zoo. I don't care. I'm desensitized. Um, I would rather see, like, a strange pig... Or some sort of weird-ass niche animal I haven't seen before. Eating her babies, typical. Damn. Hello, hairline. I want to hug a seal so bad. Yeah, dude, seals are awesome. Can't help but feel when I see lions or tigers at the zoo that they ain't from here. Put them back. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said about that for sure. Best part of the zoos are all just the aquariums. Yeah, so my favorite zoo is the Fort Worth Zoo that I've been to because there's this huge-ass herpetorium that also has, like, a bunch of monster fish, like red tail catfish, ripsaw catfish, the older relative of uh, the catfish that I keep in my tank. They've got some really cool fish. A whatatorium? A herpetorium. When I was a teenager, I, I would see the word herpetorium, and I would always say, ha, huh, I wonder where the derpatorium is, thinking I was a comedy master. But it it's like a reptile habitat, basically, and like stupid bugs, too. 
Now I'm imagining a dude, bro, looking at a female praying mantis, consuming her mate's head and going, typical women? I'm gonna say that next time. I'm gonna start being sexist. This is the derpatorium. Hello, Crave. White people can't be poor. I think the US president said it or someone like that. What do you fucking mean? What do you fucking mean, dog? You had me distracted by OSRS talk, but going back to the weight loss being anti-black is from healthy food being an expensive commodity and saying that black people cannot afford to lose weight while affording being able to live. I don't agree with that sentiment since it's pretty far reached from it just being a socioeconomic issue over a race issue. If that was the reasoning, I can see the point, but does that also apply to like queerness and LGBT being like uh, victims of weight loss? Because it was a bunch of other things too. It wasn't just blackness. It was a variety of things. I guess just like minorities in general. Who said this? A book in a store I found in Oklahoma. It was a book called... Maybe I can fucking find it. Maybe we could just like no video games. Just read this fucking book on stream. Uh, I know, It's called Unfuck Your Eating. Using science to build a better relationship with food, health, and body image. Five minute therapy. See, here's the thing. Like, this description, food is complicated, and our relationships with food and eating are all kinds of fucked up. It doesn't help that the cultural message about health, diet, body image, and weight are fat, phobic. I okay. At the risk of being an asshole chud, it's my personal opinion that if I were to ever read, like, a self-help book about weight loss, and within the second sentence the word fat phobic is used, I probably would decide to not read that book um maybe there's a point to it but i feel like it's just gonna be i don't know like i actually genuinely want to read this now maybe i'll learn something from it maybe i'm completely wrong about what i think maybe i should discard my preconceived notions and actually read a book what a novel concept See, in the description, it doesn't mention anything about, like, the blackness stuff. I wonder if I could get, like, a chapter list. Because it was the title of, like, chapter 5, I think. Man, I need to... We need to do book club. We need to all read this. Hello, Rumbles. <clears throat> about Dr. Faye G. Harper, ACS. ACN is a badass, funny lady with a PhD. She's a licensed professional counselor, board supervisor, certified sexologist, and applied clinical nutritionist with a private practice and consulting business in San Antonio. That's fine. Like, I don't have a problem with any of that. You know, that's an ad hominem. Like, you don't attack the person who wrote the book. You you, you see what they have to say. Like, I don't give a fuck who wrote it. Um, I'm just, like, morbidly curious. Because, like, I'm in, I couldn't read it because I'm not going to buy it. Um, now I, now I'm saying I might, but I didn't want to just sit there and buy it because I wasn't sure if, you know, I would read it. What is she basing her comments on? I have no idea. I need to read the book. That's the thing. It's hard to really like criticize a book you haven't read. The only, literally the only information I have outside of the title and the little starting thing is the, uh, the chapter title that I read. Hello, Misa. Would you rather me do like a book reading on unfuck your eating or talk about politics for 40 minutes? Although maybe looking at this book, maybe you wouldn't be able to avoid the politics reading it. The feeling that it will delve into politics to some extent. Hello, Machine Gun Weasel. Um, damn, I kind of want to read this now, but this is not the time. Hello, Matoko. Attacking the person gives you engagement and makes the algorithm like you, though. I have strong feelings about fat phobia in the workplace, but I feel differently about fat phobia in the context of one's relationship to their health. Playing Dragon's Dogma 2 just wish the port was better. Is it fun aside from like the tech issues or the port issues? Part of me thinks that she's trying to get some moral gloss to her message at the expense of the group she's speaking for. Yeah, that's good. That's really what matters. Hello Rumbles, thank you for the 69 month resub, I appreciate it, thank you very much. Hello Jiggly, hello Tyrone. I'm doing okay. Um, I'm a cripple. I was in Oklahoma and I, I fucked my ankle. But it it's not that bad. It's just I walk funny. And I'm probably going to walk funny for like another week. As long as I... It's one of the... It's this kind of moment where I'm really glad that I just sit in a chair all day. Because it's not that big of an issue. I had to do monkey gym shit to make it fine on my old ass uh, PC. Reading stream. Hello, Silva. 
Man, everyone's playing Stardew Valley, huh? How is Oklahoma? It was fine. I My sister wanted to go there for her birthday, so it wasn't really about what I wanted. It was about, you know, she wanted to do it for her birthday. I, I don't know. It was fine. It wasn't my favorite. It wasn't a bad time either. It was it was chill. I hate it here. Don't come to Oklahoma. I see why she likes it. But to me, I kind of felt like it was a politically better than Texas situation. But like everything else was like Texas light. I don't know. Maybe I've grown to be too much of a consumer. Too used to my water burgens. We ate at some newish like uh, places where I tried some new things. I found out I like chorizo because we ate at a Guatemalan breakfast place, and I did. I had no idea what to fucking order because I'm looking at this shit and I'm like as white as a fucking glue stick. And I ordered a uh, what was it fucking called? Some Rancheros breakfast thing with, like, sunny-side-up eggs, beans, and bacon. I ordered the whitest thing I could find, but Autumn got the chorizo and couldn't finish it, so I, I ended up eating hers, too. Huevos Rancheros, yes, that's what it was called. And the chorizo was pretty good. I liked it a lot. But, like, I, I, I can't even enjoy chorizo right because, like, you're supposed to put it in, like, the soft taco thing, right? And... I don't like it. Like, I'd rather just eat the chorizo. I don't want to put all this shit in the taco. Like, I'd rather just put butter on the, the, the tortilla and eat, eat it like that. And then eat the, the, the ingredients separately. I don't really like just putting a bunch of shit in there and then just fucking, you know. And I think that's like a very white thing to say. And just eat it on its own TBH. Canned tuna wrapped in a tortilla. I don't think I've, I've had that. It's about the well, I tried it. I tried it. I put um, I I said watch this tubes. It's about to be another YouTube food hack, and I took my sister's tilapia, the chorizo, some of my sunny side up eggs, some beans, some cheese, uh, some bacon, and I threw all that shit in there and ate it, and like it tasted fine, but I just don't really like the experience of of putting it all in a fucking bundle and like this. I just enjoy eating it one at a time. Like, I get to enjoy it on its own. The tortilla is mainly a vehicle to get it all into your mouth. But maybe I didn't do the right ingredients. Maybe I need to try different combinations. Spice sausage, eat it however the fuck you want. I did. And my sister couldn't eat her tilapia, and I had that. And it was fantastic. You know... Hispanics are really great at cooking tilapia. I think that's one of the things that white people can't cook. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had, like, a good tilapia at, like, a white establishment. But the tilapia there was fire. It was almost like salmon. It was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. So, probably my favorite thing I ate at the Guatemalan place. And, yes, I know Huevos Rancheros is not white, but it's the whitest thing because the other shit is, like... I don't even remember the fucking names. It's crazy shit that I have no idea what it is where I have to Google like half of the ingredients. So that was not white, but it was the whitest choice on the menu that I saw. Chorizo covered in that tapatio is the only way I enjoy it. I love tapatio sauce. Oh man, um, I had mahi mahi for the first time. I. I don't think I like mahi-mahi. I think uh, mahi-mahi is on the lower end of, of the fish tier list. I enjoyed the tilapia more, and the tilapia was less than half the price. I think that the red drum, red fish, is still the king of the fish. Probably my favorite. Black and mahi-mahi tacos, what does that taste like? It tasted like tilapia almost, but like the meat was a lot tougher than the typical fish it wasn't you know how you eat salmon or redfish or chilean sea bass and it's like buttery smooth and like you you try to cut it with a fork and a knife and it shatters into like 17 different fragments right mahi mahi was not like that at all you have to actually like fucking saw that bitch off maybe it was just a bad place 
<laughs> but my first experience was not altogether positive. We need the Whataburger menu tier list. I literally order one thing. The triple meat, triple cheese, Whataburger. Ketchup, mustard, and pickles only. Their other stuff is good, but like... It's... That's the comfort meal for me. I thank you, Dalo, for the 81-month resub. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I thank you for the rats, Tolo. Yeah, no problem, dude. Get one of everything, then do the tier list. I've gotten, like, a lot of the stuff at Whataburger. Like, I think number two would be the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich with the barbecue substituted for honey butter. That's a magical experience. People get it all the time, so you should try getting it at Whataburger. It's like a really big honey butter chicken biscuit. Fantastic. It's great. The actual honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich is really good, too. But the honey butter is better for sure. Um, their chicken strips are all right. There's not... I've never really had anything at Whataburger where I'm like, wow, this is dog shit. I hate it. If I had to say, I would think that the worst part of the Whataburger experience are the french fries. They're kind of like Little Caesars in the sense that they can be really good if you get them super fucking fresh. But if they've even been sitting for like five minutes, the quality tanks to like 10% of what they could be. So I'm not big on the water fries, but the burgers and the chicken make up for it. I've seen videos where people went to fast food places for a week and get a new item each day. I also can never eat Wendy's again. I already hated Wendy's. We've, we've already gone over like the Wendy's surge pricing. But in a video, King Cobra JFS said that his girlfriend's, um, her, uh, her lady parts tasted like Wendy's hamburgers, which might be one of the most vile things I've ever heard anyone say. And I don't think I could ever eat it again. <laughs> I don't think I could ever eat at Wendy's again. Like, I didn't really have any plans to begin with, but I think that fucking completely killed it. I think it's completely over. Didn't Wendy's go back on surge pricing? Yeah, of course they did. Wendy's is ruined forever for me. Yeah, hopefully you can get it out of your head. Hopefully you're not like me where you hear some cursed information, something fucked up, and it's just stuck in there forever. It's like those custom-fitted flashlights. Man, I don't really know why I watch King Cobra. Part of me wants to subject you guys to his latest cooking video, though. It's really fucking funny. I think it's the worst one he's done yet. It's awful. It's actually, like, horrible. I don't remember what a Wendy's burger tastes like, but now I'm curious. The last time I ate Wendy's was years ago and took a few bites on my double cheeseburger and just gave it to my friend. And he, like, ate it. I don't like that I know that new King Cobra factoid. No, yeah, that's fair. Why are we always talking about American processed foods in here? Because we're mostly American, surprisingly enough. A low raw bagel eater. Wendy says they're reevaluating. The CEO said that shit to the investors, so I would still expect the surge pricing to still happen. Just frame as a benefit. It's all about how you frame it. If you had Church's chicken, yeah, but not in a really long time. I had Church's chicken for the first time at the Hootenanny at the church, which if you're not familiar with the Hootenanny, it's like a get-together, like, cookout sort of thing um, after Sunday church, where everyone in the congregation goes to, like, some dumb fuck's house, and we just stay there all day, and it's like a potluck sort of situation. And I remember I went there, and I tried church's chicken, and I thought it was the best thing I had ever eaten in my life, because, you know, up until that point, I was, like, 12, 13 somewhere around there and most of what i had eaten was my mom and dad's cooking which both of them were terrible <laughs> so churches genuinely felt like the best chicken ever like it was god's gift to man manna from heaven but eventually i learned that that wasn't really the case hello dan pmk it was good though it was pretty good but i don't think i would appreciate it as much if i went back now any chicken can top Cane's for me. It's... I, I don't think that Cane's is bad. Like, I like it, but I don't... I don't necessarily get, like, the, the hype for it. Like, it's good, but I don't think it's so good that it's head and shoulders above everything else. 
especially when you consider that it's far more expensive and the line is always long as shit. Um, the sauce is really fucking good, though. I'll give you that. Hello, Soren. Because of the Texas toast? Yeah, maybe. Hello, Cat Chat. But I'm also a golden chick cultist. That's my chicken joint of choice. I live and die by the golden chick. Difference between a hoedown and a hootenanny? I don't think you dance at a hootenanny. You play like... Hey, uh, you you do this thing where you'll you'll get like a bunch of kids and their parents and they'll throw eggs at each other and you try to catch the egg without breaking it. And it's like a last man standing battle royale sort of thing where they'll say everyone throw and then you throw the egg to your dad or vice versa. And, you know, you try to be the last father-son pairing at the end. Sauce is mayonnaise, honey mustard, a pat of barbecue sauce. War chest shit shit shire sauce and pepper if you want to make it. No, I don't like it that much. It's good, but I'm not going to buy all that shit. I'm not going to mix it together. I bought Dragon's Dogma 2 in my pitiful 2016 RX 480. Plays the game at 60 FPS, but 70% of the ground model is invisible. Damn. Dragon's Dogma, man. Man, oh man. I guess that's the thing everyone's going to be playing. It's going to be like Baldur's Gate. Remember the Baldur's Gate, like, quarter of a year where people were obsessed with that one? I really wish I was more into these super popular games because I feel left out whenever people get, like, their dick that hard for Dragon's Dogma or Baldur's Gate or really any of them. Heard the drama about the game so far. So, to in total, I've heard that the optimization is less than ideal and that there are microtransactions that are ultimately pointless and only for people who don't know what the fuck they're doing. Um, and one side is saying that, on principle, we should be against these microtransactions, and the other side is saying they're not important, you're an idiot, kill yourself. Um, I... I don't know. Uh, thank you, Pointy Superman, for gifting a sub to Bubble Tea Pop, Kin of the Flames, Apple for Apples, Steven, and Squidletic. Thank you very much, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support, dog. Or change how your current one looks. Yeah, I've heard that some of this shit you can buy with in-game currency. I don't know the extent of it. I really just don't know. Um, so I'm going off of what other people are saying, so I'm not confident one way or another. Thank you, Cactorm, for the 16 months. Appreciate it. I... I think it's weird to be mad at people who are, like, on principle mad at microtransactions regardless of whether they end up being impactful or not. I didn't. I don't particularly like the worthless microtransactions in Monster Hunter, for example. I think that, yeah, they don't really amount to anything, but if you're just like tacitly accepting it then you risk you risk it uh bringing in worse shit in my opinion you can buy all of them with no i understand that i understand that but it's just the principle of the matter right like having the audacity to increase the amount you pay for the digital fucking game that takes like zero dollars to produce a copy of <laughs> and you know, having the audacity to also have microtransactions as relevant or irrelevant as they are is understandably going to rub people the wrong way. Now, the Capcom games that I play, like Monster Hunter, are good enough that I, I look the other way. But I think that's still dog shit that there's microtransactions in Monster Hunter too. I've heard it compared to Devil May Cry where apparently you can buy red orbs like the experience of that game and it's just it's a known fact within the community that you would have to be a complete rube to buy it but you i still don't understand like getting mad at people for being mad about microtransactions being present the audacity of selling millions of copies and still making so little money you got to lay off staff Case of Dragon's Dogma 2, I just feel like getting mad about microtransactions when there's legit issues and need corrections focused on the wrong thing. Sure, I can see that. Um, I just think it's fascinating that usually when these sorts of launch controversies happen, I feel like a good deal of the people are talking about the quality of the game. And I don't think I've heard anyone talk about the game like I said earlier. I people say they're enjoying it but or that it's like uh, dragon's dogma but better in every way but it's just interesting how the people 
are not talking about the game at all <laughs> in general. So I guess, I guess people are really addicted to it. Like all the Dragon's Dogma defenders are in the mines right now. They're playing that shit. They're no-lifing it. Not against being upset about the microtransactions. It shouldn't be there, but people are spreading false info about what the microtransactions is and making it out to be worse than it is. I mean, yeah, you can buy it all early, but I don't know. That still rubs me the wrong way. Everybody on my damn Twitch front page was playing. I say that we should get mad at people for buying video games in general instead of big booty ball busters, also known as BBBB. I don't know what BBBB is. Hello, Richter. With Capcom, it's always just using nearly adopters to beta test for people who will buy it with all the DLC or extra content. They've been like that since the 90s. It's not worth to buy a Crapcom game at launch unless it's Resident Evil where the DLC is a different thing. The totally overshadowed Team Ninja's new game that came out today, too. I think I saw you were playing some weird fucking game called, like, Rise of the Shinobi or something to that effect, right? Is that the one you're talking about? I hope Monham Wilds is okay at launch. Ronin, my bad, my mistake. Rise of the Ronin. I'm racist. All of these these Japanese titles just blend together for me. Um, Monster Hunter Wilds. I mean, Monster Hunter World had... Do let me see. Let, you know what? Let me just see. How much... I know it has DLC, but let me look at Monster Hunter World really quick. Like, how much DLC does this shit have? Um, additional jet. Okay, this is. I'm not gonna list the free ones. There's a guild marm costume, deluxe kit, handler costume, handler's mischievous dress, free character. Okay, uh, Mega Man sticker set, single voucher for character edit, two voucher for character edit, three voucher for character edit. Um, oh wow. So it's telling me. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you a screenshot. You know, sometimes I, I could sit here and read all of this shit out to you in a monotone voice, but I feel like a picture is worth a thousand words, so I'm just going to show that to you. Um, and this is why people are like, maybe we shouldn't be accepting of these weird little DLCs. Because, like, did you know Monster Hunter had five, apparently has $541 of microtransactions? What the fuck? I had no idea that this was the case. Like, I knew it had micros, but I thought it was like $50 of shit. Tops. This is for World. This is for Monster Hunter World. $541. Good God. Granted, nobody buys this shit. Nobody cares. But, like, come on. <laughs> come on, dude. What about Rise? Let me see. Let me see. Let's look at Monster Hunter Rise. But this is just, like, what Capcom does, I guess. I had no idea it was to that extent. So, for Rise, it's telling me... Uh, the Steam thing says... Uh, let me scroll down. That's always a good sign. Oh, oh, there's so much that I have to do browse all in like a separate tab. Yeah, it's a lot. It's probably a similar amount. Um, wowee. Why doesn't it tell me like the total price? That's kind of insane, right? When there's over 200 results for DLC, it doesn't give you like a total at the bottom. Instead, the total is replaced with browse all. So you could see the other 52 DLCs, I suppose. That always bodes well. Um, several hundred dollars is likely the case. And once again, like none of that is like you don't need to buy a single dollar of that to enjoy anything in Rise. But I that bothers me. I can't really begrudge anyone for being bothered by DLC. People defended Helldivers 2 selling super credits. The only, like, I don't know that much about the credits in Helldivers, but Helldivers is a $40 game versus a, um, let me, let me make sure I get the number right. Let me look at Dragon's Dogma. Um, $70. So there is a significant price difference there that should be noted. Um... I'm generally against microtransactions. I still think if it's a $40 game, it's kind of fucked to have microtransactions. But like, they're not going away. 
ever. I love ordering fries from Jack in the Box and getting that lone curly fry. Hello, Janksfers. Learn from Train Simulator, not showing total price. I don't think that's like them doing it, though. It's a quirk of the Steam interface. Go back in time and kick the shit out of the horse armor guy. Oblivion really was the worst game ever made, if you think about it. Despite the popularity of complaints online, I think this is just an example that microtransactions are popular with their player base and people do buy them, but they're shamed into silence, so it's hard to get the true gauge. So, in my opinion, and feel free to disagree, I don't know the entire story with Dragon's Dogma 2, but with what people have told me in here, it seems like it preys on people who don't understand what they're buying. Like, oh, I have to get fast travel for this. Um, I will buy this before actually playing the game to kind of like, you know, maybe milk people a little more who don't do their research. Like, preying on, on ignorant consumers, more or less. So I think that's kind of fucked. But... Because nobody, like, the people who are really into Dragon's Dogma are saying, like, you would have to be an idiot to buy this shit. Like, there's no reason to buy it. So, you know, logically, I'm sure the devs understand that. So it must be targeted towards people who just don't do the research, right? Hello, fellow ignorant consumer. I don't think people buy them for something like Capcom games that much. It probably costs zero dollars to implement them, so it's all profit. A lot of games and MMOs have starter packs full of items. That will be... Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's It happened with Resident Evil 4 as well. It's honestly kind of the Capcom uh, special. A lot of games and MMOs have starter packs. No, I already I already read that one. Sorry. The DD2M microtransaction is a stupid tax. No, no, no. I, I don't like framing it that way. I, like, yes, the buyer should beware, but you... I don't know. I wouldn't feel comfortable saying you're stupid for like looking at a game and like being excited for it and saying, oh, there's this other shit. I should buy this to get the full experience. Should they do their research? Yeah, probably. But some people just like buy into the hype of the game and, you know. We've all fucked up and like made a stupid video game purchase before, right? <laughs> right? Right? Capcom was doing so good for a while, they had to fuck it up eventually. Well, wasn't the fuck up from Capcom, like, re like retroactively adding DRM to, like, Monster Hunter and fucking over the modding community? I think that's way worse than the microtransaction shit um, in my book. Like, that's, like, absolutely terrible and, and worth, like, boycotting a company, if we're gonna be honest. Like, that is completely fucked, because at that point... Like, adding DRM years after a game release is just spiting only the paying customer. Like, there is, like, no fucking argument that it's good for piracy in my eyes. Even if I've made bad game purchases, I've never purchased a single micro chance. I have. I bought them with free games that I really enjoyed. Because, like, with Path of Exile, it's like, okay, well, let's look at this. Spent, like, thousand-plus hours in a free-to-play game. Like the devs. Yeah, the skins are a little expensive, but you know what? Like, it's a free game. I don't. I will pay them, get something out of it, and you know they get money from giving me so and so hours of entertainment. I don't have a problem with that conceptually. I wouldn't do it now because I think Path of Exile sold out to ten cent, and now they're not like a you know our indie guys anymore. But back then, I didn't have an issue with it. Um, so in theory. If it's a free-to-play game, I've done microtransactions before. Only thing they successfully fucked over were the people playing on deck mods. Their target were almost completely unaffected. Deeply regret spending money on Genshin Impact. <laughs> I still haven't even played Genshin Impact. Let me think of like the worst video game purchase I can think of. What was like the most dog shit purchase for me? It's actually recently. Um, I was looking at RuneScape 3 Bank Space because there are microtransactions in RuneScape 3 and I, I misread it and I saw... I thought that it was saying you can get like all of the bank boosters for $12. So I added $12 to my Steam wallet and I'm like going through the checkout and then I realized it's $12 per and if I wanted all of them, it was going to be like $70. So I didn't buy any of them. I decided I wasn't going to spend any money on RuneScape 3 Bank and I spent it on Vetus games instead. <laughs> because I felt like that was too much to ask for. 
I love Miyukuki. So I wanted that bank space, but I'm not paying twelve dollars a boost. That's fucking highway robbery. And that shit is completely fucked in the head. Hello, Incromancer. Every game I purchased to play with friends was a bad purchase, really? Is that the free ones from premium memberships? No. Hello, Empty Perspective. I know someone who paid $500 for an Overwatch account to get a Pink Mercy skin, but was locked out of the account a week later and was scammed. Um, But that doesn't even really count because I didn't end up spending the money on the intended purchase. I guess I bought like five Overwatch loot boxes once. That was probably not smart. That was pretty stupid in hindsight. But I was, you know, I was feeling myself. I was feeling wild. It's high on the hog. Feeling crazy. A little tally, Ted and Bob. I bought the DLC for Fire Emblem Engage about a year ago and still haven't played it. One thing that I learned about... I, this trip to Oklahoma, I learned so much about myself. I'm going to say something completely mean-spirited and hateful. I need to have like an outlet for my toxicity. Um, I think that like being a streamer and listening to streamers has completely ruined my ability to listen to podcasts because like my sister was putting some on and I just like the way they talk at least in the one she was listening to feels so like forced and stilted and unnatural and it's like hello there guys um today we're going to be talking about the axolotl <laughs> it irritates me for some reason i don't know they're not doing anything wrong they seem like good guys they seem like they're good at what they do but like i'm so used to the psycho babble like stream of consciousness that i don't know when anyone has like any sort of like rehearsed or practiced form of speech like my caveman brain doesn't like it i want everyone to be a rube like i am podcast scripted most of the time i don't know i feel like they're probably not scripted but it's like a bulletin point thing right 80 wood cutting because desert treasure bumped up the magic logs to 80 over 70 i still have 79 Depend yeah i know there's different ones but the ones i was listening to i was like wow i am actually in pain <laughs> like, i don't know i would be like so frustrated if someone was speaking like this to me should talk like Jerma and go on psychotic tangents every five minutes. Everyone has a podcast. I'm getting on RuneScape right now. Should I get Mem or wait? Should you get Mems and join the guild? Sushi will invite you. How are you? I'm high on the hog. I'm, you know, I'm here. I'm queer. Went to Oklahoma for my sister's birthday. You had a decent time. Sprained my ankle, but uh, it's not the end of the world. Hello, Cubano cat. Bill Burr's podcast was like a Tolomeo priest. Does he say priest stream? Never played RuneScape feels daunting. Yeah, it's a lot to learn. Even if you're like an OSRS player, jumping into RS3 can be a lot. Make sure you take Advil. I'm not doing that. I'm an anti-medicine, dude. Former Sith, how use anger for energy? I don't know. When I'm angry, like when I'm really pissed, I try to like clean... I'm like, yeah, you stupid fucking dust, you little piece of shit, huh? You like that, you fucking slut? Get in the fucking dustpan, you little bitch. Fucking freak. Nobody loves you. I fucking hate you. Get swept, slut. Um, so that's my approach. I don't usually talk like that to the dust, but that's like my internal monologue. Thought about joining, but don't know how to get into it other than jumping. You just gotta say fuck it. Um, if you sit there and read about it, it's going to be too overwhelming. You just got to do it. Like, if you want to do it, do it. Um, I'm a big proponent in... I think a lot of games in general, in like every single category of game, has a tendency to be too wordy with like tutorials and shit. And just does not trust the player enough. And they overcomplicate fucking everything. Like you're reading this text and it's like two paragraphs to explain... Like, instruments are corresponding to a button. When you see the X, press X. It's all you fucking need. <laughs> like, it's all you need. But it's like, they always get way too verbose, and it can be a little daunting for a Texan that's not very good at reading. And I'm, I feel like, for me personally, it's a lot easier to just send it. Like, you're going to fuck up. Like, you're going to make mistakes. But it's really not that bad. 
Um, learning organically is better anyways to me. Let's grab some feathers to pull and run to the nearest river and start fishing. Yeah, you just gotta fucking do it. Quick games because their tutorials were too long. Yeah, I uh, I got so upset because, you know, when I first started playing Helldivers, uh, Recon messaged me and was like, yeah, there's a mandatory tutorial. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. Like, it is like my least favorite thing in a video game. Just let me be DSP. Let me be an idiot. Let me figure it out. I'll be okay. I'll be all right. I really am not like a single-celled organism. I'm not a tardigrade. Might be another kind of tard, but I'm not, you know, a water bear. I don't have the weight to be any kind of bear anymore. So, yeah, the tutorial was well done. I'll give it that. But it's just like sometimes you just want to get into the fucking game. And that's what I love about FromSoft games is for the most part, like, there's kind of a tutorial, but they just kind of throw you the fuck in there and you figure it out. I like that a lot. Is it RuneScape on Steam? Yes. Here's how to close menus like a true Democrat, and that's it. Like that about Outward. There's a whole tutorial area. You can say fuck it and get right to gaming. Yeah, and it's been ruined by people like DSP who do the, the I don't want to do tutorials. I think that's the correct way. I think it's more fun to just figure things out and feel it out. But he gets mad and blames the game when he doesn't read. That's where he fucks up. Should be against the Geneva Convention? Yeah. It's even worse when it's like an hour fucking long. That's what, Maybe that's why I can't play JRPGs anymore. I feel like every fucking JRPG has like a two hour long opening sequence. I just can't do it anymore. Like I'm 31 years old. Like I have like 10 hours left in my life total. <laughs> I'm going to die soon. I don't have time to sit here and fucking... Like, I've used an item in a JRPG before. It's I can figure it out. <laughs> I, I really can. I really can, and if I can, I'll look it up. Like, the flashback to Persona 5's 10-hour-long tutorial. Yeah, I don't think I could ever play that game again. I enjoyed that game, but none of those SMT games... Like, they're a one and done for me, for sure. Turn pass off and RS. They spam them nonstop. Yeah. Tutorial in Dragon's Dog is literally a mine and yeeting some fat ass. I hated Dragon Quest VII for being the first 20 hour tutorial I ever played, or the trust me, it gets good 15 hours in. I'm torn on how to feel about that sentiment. I think 9 times out of 10, in my personal lived experience, the trust me, it gets good thing never ends up like. Uh, it, it seems like a lot of the time people are Stockholming themselves, honestly. Maybe it really does get good 15 hours in, but I don't know how you can begrudge someone for not wanting to go through 15 fucking hours of drudgery to get to the good part. Um, I don't know, dude. Wait, it gets good at New Game Plus? They were literally saying that for, like, No Man's Sky and Starfield. Those are the two games I remember. Because when uh, No Man's Sky came out, it was... um. We need to get to the center of the universe. It's going to change everything. And when Starfield came out, it's like there were news articles and shit saying that it had like a revolutionary New Game Plus system that changes the game. And there were people legitimately saying like, we got to wait until New Game Plus to fully, you know, assess the situation. So it's already been done. People got full-time jobs. And just, see, I don't. Like, I'm a fucking piece of shit, and I still don't want to... <laughs> I still don't want to spend 15 hours on, on drudgery. Does everyone here love Starfield? I haven't played it. I have to I have to play it one day, but I don't imagine I'd like it very much because I'm not really a big fan of, like, the space theme in general. I don't really like outer space stuff unless it's something truly innovative like Outer Wilds. I just don't find the setting all that compelling. There are some that I've really liked. Like, I liked Mass Effect. Mass Effect was pretty cool. The Mass Effect was mostly cool because of the characters rather than the setting, even though they were, they're connected. Um, yeah, I don't know. Usually space. I've kind of gotten burnt by space games a lot of the time. Quick travel makes you feel like you're not space traveling at all. Starfield doesn't give you the exploration you want from Morrowind or similar either. Yeah, when they started advertising it as Oblivion in space, I knew it was Jover for my personal enjoyment. 
That might be one of the least appealing things Bethesda could use to describe their games for me. You think Bioware will ever make a good game again? I mean, I hope so. I don't really want to root for people's failure. But uh, they haven't been doing great, huh? What was the last good game they made? What's wrong, Gensel? Why are you so eyeing me? Um, Bethesda is so socially unaware. Mass Effect Trilogy, Dragon Age Origins. I think the last Bioware game I played was Mass Effect 2. I didn't play 3 or Andromeda. How's Daisy? She's good. She's mad at us. When we went to Oklahoma, we put all of the dogs in like a doggy daycare at Autumn's work. And all of them were overjoyed to see us. Except Daisy. Daisy has been very, very mad that we left her for a couple of days. And she won't like get on the bed and snuggle with us. She immediately goes to her kennel. Um, she is very mad at both me and Autumn for abandoning her. It's honestly really fucking funny that she's pouting so hard over it. Because even Sif was like just overjoyed to see us. And I would have imagined that if any of them were going to hold grudges, it would have been the Sif. But they sent us a picture of Daisy at the doggy daycare. And uh, this is like imagine like you're walking, you're doing urbex in like an insane asylum and you see this shit. <laughs> like... You would probably shit yourself. Where are my parents? Yeah, she was upset. She was really mad at us. She still is mad at us. But I think she'll get over it eventually. We just gotta we gotta be extra nice to her. We gotta spoil her. She's like 115, 120 fucking pounds. But she's the biggest baby ever. It's just, uh, it's just embarrassing. Hold on. I gotta show you the cutest picture of Banjo, though. I think that this is one of the cutest dog pictures I've ever seen, period. I don't know. He's a motherfucker. Like, Banjo's a piece of shit. Like, straight up, terrible dog. Zero out of ten. You know. Not really the best in the world. But... In this one picture, he, he did look pretty cute. Sorry, I'm trying to find it. My uh, my thing isn't wanting to save the pictures. Here we go. Look at him. <laughs> look at that face, dude. How can you be mad at that fucking face? And his little tail's going. He's such a cunt, but he's so cute. Awfully pink. Yeah, he's such a baby tail is hyper speed he looks yeah he has this perpetual frown because he's got an underbite so his face just always looks like that uh, thank you code jumbo for the 39 month resub i appreciate it thank you very much not much of a dog person but he's a cutie well thank you no thoughts net head he's devious he's smart but he's like smart in a stupid way if that makes sense maybe smart isn't the right word conniving Hello, Damien. As conniving and devious. Some dogs are just like that, but he looks like he doesn't have eyelids. It's a good-looking dog. Chest almost looks like raw cheek. His tummy looks gross sometimes. It's, like, really pink. Smart in all the wrong ways. What a kind dog. He's He's got a lot of, like, literally, like, 30 minutes before I started the stream... He saw one of our cats and play bowed at the cat. And the cat hissed and swatted at him. And he was like... Rrr, 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 and I'm just like frustrated because... I don't know how to handle it. Like, I don't know... Like, the cat is just gonna be like... No, it wasn't even like... He shouldn't do that, but... Like, he was fine until like the, the cat is being aggressive. So I can't be like that mad at him. I don't know what to do about it. Like, he's not, like, you know, trying to kill them or anything. But he starts, like, barking and getting freaked out. His tail hits like a brick when it gets going. Dude, Daisy's tail has committed so much testicular trauma against me. Like, she's a Great Dane and her tail is right at nut height. So I have to, like, constantly be cupping my nuts around her. Because I will take... 
she will find the most fucked up angles to go right behind my my wiener shield and hit like the back ball what's up dreams how are you dude she's she's a handful she's a handful for sure i don't know why i like dogs sometimes Speaking of Bioware, I only wanted to play Dragon Age Inquisition because there's this character that, according to the official lore, has a huge dick. He has, like, horns or something. I don't know if I could take open world offline MMO slot, though. Cats are greater than dogs? So, how do you guys feel about the idea that, like, cat people are, like, way more annoying about their preference in animals than anybody else? Like, maybe this is just, like, trauma from my anecdotal experience, but I feel like cat people are always like weirdly aggressive against other types of animals, especially if it's like an unconventional pet, like a shrimp or a rat. <laughs> like, I don't talk about my cats most of the time. Dogs are cool and cats are cool, but I think cat people are typically more anti-dog than dog. Yeah, I like both. I used to be a cat person when I was a teenager. Really changed when I got Sif. I didn't like dogs that much until Sif. But I like cats too when they're not trying to circumcise me. Complaints online about toxoplasmosis out of nowhere? It's not really a complaint though. I think it's just an observation. I think it's interesting that cats give you brain worms. I almost assuredly have them. It's just fascinating. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm not going to say, hey, you shouldn't get a cat because of brain worms. I mean, God knows, like, people are already aggressive and rude and annoying enough already that, like, it's a drop in the bucket. Cats give you brain worms? Yeah, there's a parasite associated with with cats called Toxoplasmosis gondii, I believe is what it's called. They're literal brain worms that when you get infected, you maybe get, like, a little bit sick for a bit. But it's nothing that usually affects people, and I, I think most people are asymptomatic people think it might make you like a touch more aggressive but it's not really of any real consequence like it doesn't have any severe health implications or anything like that uh, it's just a factoid and i think a pretty they they believe they they speculate that a significant chunk of the population has it because of the prevalence of cats grew up with an aggressive dog it made me indifferent towards them yeah i can understand that Personally, I'm afraid of ponies because I grew up with an aggressive pony. So, I get it. I get it. I don't... Uh, I have a hard time with horses. Can a brain parasite not have adverse effects? Well, it has very minor adverse effects. Uh, you can read more about it. It's called Toxoplasmosis gondii. Um, like I said, I think the worst thing they've managed to, co to connect with them is that Let's read the Wikipedia article, I guess. Let's see. Let's do a, a quick fact check. Toxoplasmosis. Let's go. We, what it, Wikipedia is woke now, right? We can't use Wikipedia. Um, up to half the world's population is infected by T. Gondae but have no symptoms. In the United States, approximately 11% of people have been infected. While in some areas of the world, this is more than 60%. Transmission during pregnancy from a pregnant woman to her baby was confirmed. There is tentative evidence that infection may affect people's behavior. Acute toxoplasmosis is often asymptomatic in healthy adults. Symptoms may manifest and are often influenza-like, swollen lymph nodes, headaches, fever and fatigue, or muscle aches and pain that lasts for a month or more. It is rare for a fully functioning immune system in a healthy human to develop severe, severe symptoms following infection. People with weakened immune systems Likely to experience headache, confusion, poor coordination, seizures, lung problems that may resemble tuberculosis or pneumocystis, gyrovesis, pneumonia, a common opera, yada, yada, yada. You get it. Um, latent. Due to absence of ob obvious symptoms, hosts easily become infected. Uh, reviews of serological studies have estimated that 30 to 50 percent of the global population has been exposed to and may be chronically infected with latent toxoplasmosis infection rates differ from country to country associated with disease burdens neural alterations and subtle gender dependent behavioral changes in immunocompetent humans as well as an increased risk of motor vehicle collisions so you're more likely to get in a car wreck, maybe, if you have it. 
Um, as far as brain parasites are concerned, that's a pretty mild effect, I would say. Um... Just kind of, there's a society and culture segment about crazy cat ladies. Term coined by news organizations to describe scientific findings that link the parasite toxoplasmosis, toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasmosis is the disease. Toxoplasma gondii is the parasite. My mistake. Severe mental disorders and behavioral problems. The suspected correlation between cat ownership and childhood and later development of schizophrenia. Suggested that further studies were needed to determine a risk factor for children. Our later studies showed that T. gondii was not a causative factor in later psychoses. Researchers also found that cat ownership does not strongly increase the risk of a T. gondii infection in pregnant women. The term crazy cat lady draws on both stereotype and popular cultural reference. It originated as instances of the aforementioned afflictions were noted amongst the populace. A cat lady is a cultural stereotype of a woman who compulsively hoards and dotes upon cats. The biologist Yaroslav Flair is a proponent of the theory that toxoplasmosis affects human behavior. How do they test this? I have no idea. Um, I'm not going to get into like super detailed scientific research. Um, I think uh, the effects seem mild to me, but maybe maybe there's more to it. Hello, Magnet. I know a lady like that, and she is indeed crazy. Crazy cat lady archetype misogyny. Yeah, more or less. Thought crazy cat lady came from witches or something. Hmm. So you could have worms in your brain right now. 11% of Americans have it apparently, and you're more likely to have it if you've been around cats during childhood. I know I was. So I would say it's reasonably likely that I have this. It's unfortunate that you can't feel them writhe in your brain, though. That would be kind of relaxing, right? It would be like ASMR gonna take my brain out of my head and wash it in the sink crazy i was crazy once oh god glad my pets just give me lung disease if i don't have air purifiers going I don't think that would be relaxing well you know you gotta try it right that's what people always tell me so maybe you just gotta try it hello regular matt think it'd be more like an itch that you can't scratch i'm getting a burger Oh, okay, I have another interesting thing of note. I ate so much ghost pepper bucky jerky that on the way out, it hurt so bad that my testicles started feeling numb. That was a new experience for me. So that I didn't know that was a possibility. And I'm glad I got to experience it. Hello, whatever. Are they still there? Yeah, haven't you mentioned? You might be thinking of Dramamine. I don't take Dramamine because I used to take it a lot on account of the fact that I get really motion sick in the car. I actually, you know, just trip. I almost threw up like five times on the way to Oklahoma. So I took Dramamine for it. But one time the Dramamine I took made my balls feel like they were sensitive in the way your nuts are during the refractory period like you know when you ejaculate and it's all too sensitive to the touch my balls felt like that for like an hour after taking dramamine it was miserable i won't ever take it again because it was absolute agony going to lurk while i play ac revelations yeah take it easy pain and don't want to drive i'm sorry baby Get a dragon battle axe for mining. I got a D chain from one of those nodes. It's completely fucked. You can get crazy shit. Skyrim mod thing going. I still haven't gotten back to it. Um, I want to try to get the bingo games out of the way first. Can cause urinary retention. But yeah, not part of the usual adverse reactions. Yeah, nobody's ever experienced it. It's like, it's kind of like, you know, when you're going down a roller coaster and right before the big drop, your nuts go into your stomach. It's like that for an hour. <laughs> it's. It's a feeling. Hooked on a feeling. I'm doing bingo games today? No, I actually wanted to play this, but I had to go to Oklahoma. It's a very strange Steam game with like three reviews that 
I mean, you'll. it looks really interesting. Maybe it won't be. It's called Order of the Snake Scale. It is, like, the best way I could describe it is kind of like an indie take on, like, Fallout 2-style games almost, a little bit. Um, it looks fascinating. So, we'll see if it's actually fascinating or if it's dog shit. Never heard of it? Yeah, nobody's played it before. It has three user reviews. Going to bed, I'm going to have a rough month, 12-hour work days, because the power plant has a period where a lot of stuff happens at once. Take it easy. Make sure you're rested. Thank you for streaming today. I've had an incredibly shitty start to my vacation. What happened, dude? Took a look at it and said maybe? Yeah, yeah, it's like a big maybe. It visually, the cover looks appealing, but what's inside is what's going to count, right? feel like this sort of game would be a difficult thing to pull off as an indie developer, but if they did it right, it could be really cool. I don't know. I'm just going to have to see. Dev's other games are also kind of weird looking. Yeah, I saw that. I looked at his catalog, and he's um, he's made a lot of games that look very strange. So if this one is, is good, I might have a new a new indie dev to pull shit from. He has a game called Dick Ranger Demo. That looks like my cup of tea. Owner and general manager took me to the office today to explain me why my pay is actually good and reasonable. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, hopefully you get accepted for the other job. Pretty sure this is a place a lot of us end up when having a bad day. Yeah, if you think about it, in a lot of ways, streamers shouldn't exist. You could make an argument that in a healthy society where people were happy and fruitful, there would be no need for this. So you could argue that streamers are a symptom of the disease. I'm not sure I would necessarily make that argument, but there's an argument to be had. Today I have had to save my whole class day from having an awful night. Every day total streams is a good day. Well, I don't know about that. You say that, but like... You, there's a possibility that one day I'm going to stream Yeek <laughs> or Candace DeVivi. So that I don't I think that would just categorically be awful. I don't think that would be a good day at all. I think that would be terrible. Or what if I um let's say I played uh Tower Unite and just fished for ten hours. Besides the contents of a happy person's life, and that doesn't include watching a streamer? Yes, but a lot of people have it. Um, how do I put this in a way that doesn't sound like shitty and condescending? I think that if people had better means, they wouldn't spend as much time like engaging in internet escapism in general. If they had like more money to go see things, do things of substance then maybe this wouldn't be as, uh, like, I don't know. It's a complete hypothetical, but it's something I've thought about before. Did I miss the Tower Unite VOD watching stream? You did. I deleted it because people were trying to, they, they were putting some weird shit in there, and they were like racist words, so I got rid of the evidence. I got rid of the evidence. It wasn't, it wasn't good. I don't want the fuzz on my case. People like to post, like, Linus from Linus Tech Tips says the hard R, and I'm just looking at that, like, okay, well, um, <laughs> do I want to let this one play out? Like, it's probably a joke, but uh, I don't know. There's already been, like, some soft A's. Mm. Uh. So, you know, and I feel like I personally feel like streaming in general, like streaming content has a pretty short shelf life. Like I don't think everyone's gonna be clamoring to watch like all of the VODs after I'm done streaming, for example, right? Like I don't think there are that many people who care about watching VODs from like four years ago unless it was something particularly noteworthy. But especially like a React stream, like who fucking cares? The entire point is like reacting to things together, right? <laughs> like <laughs> it's I don't know. I feel like there's not really that much of a reason to have a VOD for something like that. Maybe that's just me. But I'm not really like a watcher in general. I um I don't really watch streams, so I don't have the greatest grasp on this sort of thing sometimes, I suppose. 
like the internet I've been to too many countries gone to tons of museums and castles and chateaus love watching the internet game is called tower unite because there's no tower uniting well the condo is maybe kind of a tower sorta start my drive now see you soon all right baby watch list of movies and shows girls and girls because all i do is play video games miss the baz rootin baby choking reaction yeah i mean i guess so i guess so but i don't know i didn't really want to leave it up i'm sure ghost is gonna upload it tower unite is the stupidest name for the game original gmod map was just the tower yeah i think it's a reference to some gmod shit hello ghost reaper what's up dude how are you hope you and the wife are doing well um i feel like i had more stuff to talk about did i miss anything relatively eventful week for me even though it really wasn't that eventful yeah i think that's about it okay so since you guys are talking about videos i guess we'll watch a video right now um i'm gonna give a fair warning if you are eating or about to eat or want to maintain anything remotely resembling an appetite you should probably sit this one out um or maybe maybe not uh maybe you'd like it but I have to show you this video. I was watching this in, at the Airbnb at like 5 in the morning. And it's like, these motherfuckers have got to see this shit. Like, this is the best video I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, I think it's phenomenal. Okay, get that off. OBS browser, suck my dick. Alright. Let me know how the volume is. I love these things, by the way. Not the barbecue ones, but I eat the shit out of the uh, the, the naked ones. We're going to add some sauce to it. Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Sauce. <laughs> That's the good stuff right there. Dude. All right, all right, all right. I, I, you feeling it so far? Like, you feeling it? Put a little bit on each one. You like it? Let's put half the fucking bottle on it, dude. Fuck putting it in, like, a thing and shaking it That's with, like, an beautiful. even distribution. It's all right so far. It's all right so far, right? But that's a lot and of sauce. Honey barbecue and a little buffalo. All right, all right, all right. Over to it. Hello, Vok. We're going to hit that top of those frozen wings that are pre-cooked with some A1 steak <laughs> sauce. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is where I start drawing the line. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, motherfucker. Hold on. Hold on. A1 steak sauce on the chicken wings that are already barbecue flavored. Keep that in mind. Never had the top of that. This is a 13-minute long video, by the way. With little <laughs> bits of butter. There's <laughs> just a little bit of butter. Oh, Hello, Poppy. Just a little bit of butter. This is a little bit. This is a smidge. That's like half a stick of butter at least. Then we're going to take some baconator up. Or in this case, bacon up. Not related to Wendy's, but we got this stuff called bacon up. It's bacon grease. Bacon grease? The company that makes this, the fans send it, looking delicious as always. All right, all right. So, so far, we have half a bottle of Dave's Hot Sauce, half a bottle of A1 Steak Sauce on barbecue wings with half a tub of fucking butter on top. It's time... It, it's time to add some more shit. It's time to add bacon grease to it. And we're going to, uh... throw this grease... onto on our wings. You know, stick these in the fucking oven. All that fat and... All right, all right. How many of you would eat this so far? Like, how many of you would tap out? Like, if you came to my house and I cooked this shit for you, would you try it? Or would you just comp say, no, fuck this. You're an idiot. I hate you. I think it would be dog shit, but I would probably try it. I would probably try at least a bite. After some drinking... You're insane? Maybe. Maybe. This is reasonable so far. Lost me at the lard. Okay, well keep in mind- I, I want you to realize we're on minute two of a 13 minute long video. 
So this is like, you ever watch that? It's an anime some of you might have seen. It's called Dragon Ball Z. It's a show about like a dude with, with like black hair. And like throughout the show, his hair gets longer and more yellow. And it's called like Forms. And this is like the black haired Goku at this point. We haven't even gone Super Saiyan yet. Buttery goodness will fucking melt on there when it bakes. And then when they're like about Thank you, Melanitis, for the 25 months. I appreciate it. We're going to add some more ingredients. Hello, Arrow Kitsune. So after. Looks fucking gross, dude. Drain this with the excess grease off. Like, oh my god, it looked better when it had just like the butter on top of it. For the next step, YouTube. It actually looks like shit. Some serengeto, pepper jack cheese. All right, all right, we're getting the pepper and jack cheese. And cheese. And the sauce. And I'm just gonna take some of that cheese. That pepper jack habanero jalapeno cheese. That cheese sounds good, though. I would try the cheese. And tear it up into chunks. Put it all over the top. And over our boneless wings and our greasy mess here. Now we got this cheese from... Dites and Watson. It's a bacon and horseradish cheese. There's a habanero jalapeno pepper jack cheese. Sharpen the wings. You want to throw it back in the oven for a little bake. Oh. Let's add some cheese to it. There's a step of we'll chips to it. Cut off ourselves a big chunk of this cheese. How much did this shit cost? Like, this has got to be at least be a like forty dollars of shit, with right? Bacon and it's start just dumping that and tearing it into chunks. I'm putting a bunch of this cheese on top. Gonna throw on some uh, hot and chunky horseradish sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need horseradish on it, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> and he doesn't put a little on. He's always like half the bottle. Always, dude. Always. A thank you, Night Owl, for the 40 month resub. I appreciate it. But it's got enough flavor on it that I fuck with it. And I'm gonna put these back in the fucking bloody oven. I'm tabbing out goodbye, Tyron. Get the cheese nice and melted on top. Then we're gonna add some other flavors to it as well. We got some Hormel real bacon bits. So using like bacon bits that you would top on your like afternoon salad for little salty There's treats. There's load on my screen. We're watching Just a cooking video. Yeah, that's already pre-cooked. All right, all right, all right. Some of you said you were willing to try this. This is the Super Saiyan form. Would you try it now? Now that two more layers of cheese, half a gallon of horseradish, and like a pound of bacon bits have been added, are you still down to give it a try? You also have to keep in mind, he's already slightly cooked the wings and they've just been sitting there like cooling off the entire time he's adding all this bullshit on. Yeah, the horseradish is rough. The whole goddamn bottle of bacon bits on there. My mistake. It was the entire just bottle really of bacon bits. It's ballsy like that. <coughs> mm. I can't watch these. Mm. Mm. Can we cook him again? He is. Oh, that goddamn cheese gonna melt. And then bacon bits will melt on top of them wings. No worse yeah, than eating a bacon eater? I don't know about that, there. dog. Let it cool off and tuck in. Just like the last time when we done adding that <laughs> shit to it and throw it in the oven. No, no, fuck off. No, no, none of this bullshit. No, get off my window. Fuck you. We're about to finish making dickness. Don't play that game. Don't play that game, bro. Qualifies as nachos. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a good and point. Cheese and meats and shit. Would you would you say that these count as nachos, everybody? Because when the cheese started looking ooey gooey, yes, please tease me, squeeze me like this. We gotta take this. So <laughs> what if out. someone invited you over to like feed so you nachos? In there, want to crush on some Cheetos? <laughs> Cheddar jalapeno crunchy Cheetos on top. Take that shit pop. Dude. It's not oh, complete yeah, without the Cheetos, Cheetos bro. Oh, thank you, Drowning Skies, for the 52 months. I appreciate it. But thank you, Mr. Uh, M. Rubio, for the 21 months. I thank you, thank you, dude. This is revolting. Oh, come on. You think so? Thank you, Yodster, for the 66 months. And Appreciate you know, it. Fancy YouTube, but I tell you what, man. People are like, we want to see what the fuck you making. The oven is still 350, ready to go, ready to rock slow. Is this Cobra? Yes. I would willingly try it. Layer of Cheetos. With some more of that cheese. Going back in the oven. Oh, the don't worry. Wing snack. That is not a snack. We got some Sargento pepper jack cheese and jalapeno <laughs> habanero chunks. <laughs> you need more cheese. Let's take some out. <laughs> you need more cheese, Let's dude. Drape it across. Oh my god. Like this that. has got to be so fucking uh, it expensive. Want to stay on there because of how thick it is. That's all right. <laughs> I want to. I want to know how much this costs. Like you could go get like a bone-in ribeye for the amount of money it takes to make this shit. Back in the fucking oven, so that cheese can melt all over the top of it with those nacho ingredients. As we've dictated, nachos equals cheese and chips. I don't know if it's more than a hundred dollars, but around forty fifty sounds about right. Oh yes, and that's our food hack. <laughs> I, my favorite done. part is how he calls it a food hack. I thought food hacks were supposed to be like easy and simple. Like a shortcut to making something good. But maybe I don't understand what a food hack is. This is my favorite part of the entire video. Okay. Okay, okay. Put yourself in his shoes. You just made a 10,000 calorie, $50, like five layers of cheese plus Cheetos plus bacon bits. Whatever the fuck this horrible nightmare is. I want you to imagine what the next step is, because you're never going to fucking guess. You're never going to fucking guess. Like, no one will actually guess unless they've seen the video. You will not guess it. What would you do in this situation? Take them wings for a hot minute. I'll let these sons of bitches cool off. Nacho wings. All the cheese has melted on top. There's, there's have that smell to them, you know. It was so undone, son. <laughs> These boneless bites are smelling good. Let them cool off. Nickel no, fuck off. Loading with kid. I fucking hate the OBS browser. Fuck off with the ads. So this is what happens. He makes all of this shit and he leaves it out for three fucking hours. You make that abomination and you don't even eat it fresh. You let it sit for three fucking hours. <laughs> In case you thought it, the caption was a joke. Look at this shit. You can tell it has, in fact, been out for three fucking hours. Because I thought it was like a funny transition joke. But no, no. It actually is, like, matter of fact what happened, I guess. Try this damn food hack. So you're eating this before. shit cold now. 
Will this food hack be truly delicious or truly weird? Which is adorable. Exactly. <laughs> Even that up, yeah. Those wingage. Just take a look at that chicken. It's bloody fully cooked. Frozen wing dry. Oh God. God. This is a terrible snack. Are you guys telling me you wouldn't eat this shit? Come on. Oh, oh my god it's crunchy dude like how do you have five layers of cheese and the end result is crunchy it doesn't make any fucking sense it is good it's sweet it's spicy it's savory it's smoky <laughs> King Cobra Slayer's food hack. <laughs> this is my favorite video on YouTube now. Yeah, this shit really is the funniest thing I've that. ever seen. <laughs> this shit was like $60 to make. It's a little cold. <laughs> so the cheese is going to be slow to fry it on the wing. I, I really, like, if I ever do cooking videos, I want to do a cooking series where I just recreate all of these step for step. Like, just imagine one day I show up I'm naked, only an apron and the rat mask, and I'm making this shit, and I follow the recipe to the letter, including leaving it out for three hours. I play like the E cheese zone for three hours until it's cooled down enough. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm. Oh my god. You make Otter try it? That would be fucking funny. All right, so you see, did you guys like the video? Are you glad that I, I shared a video with you, you fine people tonight? Um, I, I, you know, some of you were, ex you hate me. Wow, you were expressing disgust, but I think that shit is like the funniest thing ever. Maybe my, my sense of humor is warped, but that shit is amazing. It's a good birthday gift. It's your birthday. I can sing a song if you want. Doesn't put it on a plate of surprise. It actually made me feel a little sick. Hello, Nacho Man. Eat through the whole video. My desire for nachos remains unchallenged. Hello, Angel Horror. Gag just listening to that. You guys really get that sick while like watching these food videos? <clears throat> Happy birthday to I genuinely see okay it, even if that wasn't necessarily your cup of tea you see why I like Cobra now though right like he's not doing anything like annoying he's not trying to like fuck with people he's just sitting there making his food hacks that shit's hilarious not really no you guys have a sense of fucking humor what do you mean no that shit is awesome He's brewing his own thing. Cobra's living his best life. He seems very harmless. I don't know why people would be harassing him or whatever. He's definitely unique. Is such a wet rag? No, I don't think that's true. You see why maybe you find it funny because of the deadpan delivery? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, dude. Like, he's like the master of unintentional comedy. Like, getting $60 of fucking ingredients to make the most vile concoction imaginable going through all this effort to cook this shit like cooking it in stages and then leaving it out for three fucking hours is the funniest shit ever like it's the kind of shit you would joke about but he actually does it it's amazing it's it's 
you couldn't write something like this. It's a unique experience. I'm the most normal person I know. He sure is a pioneer. And I, you know, how many of you have wondered, how did humans find out how to eat, like, absolute weird dog shit? Like, who was the first guy who sucked off a woman cow? Who was the first guy who started eating maggot cheese? And, like, all of these, like, pioneering efforts into finding out what is and isn't edible. Like, he is the poster child for that. We owe the foundation of our cuisine not on Cobra, but on people like him who just do this shit. <laughs> he is a goddamn trailblazer. He is why we have, you know, Michelin star restaurants now. <laughs> like, this is this is how that shit happens. This is the guy who tries all of those fucking weird ass mushrooms in the woods. <laughs> this is the dude who will eat snails, eat octopus. Eat the fucking puffer fish after removing the glands of venom. Desperation and starvation. Well, yeah, maybe a little bit of that, too. Spent $400 on paint and got a free RC truck. We fucking ball in. Uh, thank you for the 81 months. I don't know what I would do with an RC truck. That's sweet, but, like, I, maybe you make, like, a fucking, like, a Hulk Hogan Gundam to go on the back of it. Cobra found out something. I still don't think most people would try it. I personally would try his food. I know you think I'm lying, but I would. I would probably want to throw up immediately after trying it, but I would give it a bite. My dog would instantly body an RC truck. That's, yeah, you know, Banjo doesn't like vacuums, so. Like Cobra's cooking, you should watch with Jack's older videos, specifically his party cheese salad video. He makes... But is it a meme, though? Or is he actually, like, trying to be a pioneer in the culinary department? That's the difference. Like, if it's if they're making horrible shit as, like, a ha-ha, hee-hee, funny meme, it's not the same. It has to be genuine. Jack is a real one? Okay. Okay. Because, like, I watched that guy who was making the fucked up, like, citric acid sausages. And that's funny. But his soul isn't in it. He's just doing it for the shock value. He's not serious about his sausage. So I respect authenticity in this. I thank you, Miracle Johnson, for the 33-month resub. I appreciate it. Yes, who knows what the world is going to be like in 33 months. Do you think it's going to be better? Do you think it's going to be worse? Do you think that we're on the precipice of a, of a golden age Perhaps we are on the precipice of a, of a new world war. I would like to think it'll be better. I would like to think that a new content creator takes the world by storm. I think there's a universe where we get someone to play shipwrecked and it will catapult them into stardom. They'll be mingling, rubbing elbows with the likes of Marky Moo, Jacksepticeye, Darkside Phil, and Cyrax. And she has a name. Her name is Misa Coco. And I think she will defeat all microtransactions. She will be the messiah of gaming. I believe. I think in 33 months, we're going to see Misa in a whole new light. If Mr. Beast asked me to eat a whole plate of his... I wanted to cry because when we were at the zoo, some dude's like... Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mr. Beast. Today, we're going to have people jumping into the hippo pit for $10,000. And I wanted to commit violence. <laughs> I was like, oh, my fucking God. That, it pissed me off more than, like, the, the, the mobility Mary saying men are lazy. Hello, Live176. Is catching fish in Stardew? Well, every, every messiah has a humble beginning. That's why they're a messiah. Genuinely excited for the Marky Moo Iron Lung movie. I mean, think about Jesus. Was Jesus born with the silver spoon? Was he born in, you know, in, in the Trump Tower? No. He was born in, like, some fucking, like, barnyard boogaloo fucking billabong bullshit. Some bitch named Mary. Like, who gives a fuck? And that's kind of like you, Misa. And thank you, McGosterson, for the one-year resub. Can I have a birthday song? Yes. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mc. 
Gustafson. Happy birthday to you. So it appears I have to play a video game and I've been talking for two hours. So I'm going to hobble over and piss and then we're going to get gaming. Sorry the pre-stream took so fucking long. I just, I really wanted to have like a cultural exchange with you guys and share the King Cobra video. I think, uh, I think it was important. I think we understand each other a little bit better now. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, we've all benefited. We've all benefited in some way. You might not realize it yet, but like you've been changed a little bit in a good way. Hi, Banjo buddy. Excuse me, bud. Hi, buddy. How's my baby buddy? Alrighty. Oh. Favorite deli meat. Oh, deli meat. Um this turkey. The absolute best meme slash videos. Well thank you. It's always we've all been in a situation where we're like, hello. I have a really funny video that I'd like to show you to like a friend or a loved one. And you start playing the video and you're sitting there giggling with anticipation for how funny they're going to find it. And they're just stone faced. Like, what the fuck is, is my friend disabled? Like, what do we need to put him in a group home? <laughs> like, we've all been there. So it could be, uh, it could be quite daunting to show people your videos that you're interested in. Hello, Vincent. Uh, thank you, Noodle. Thank you for the tier three resale of 79 months. I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Dogma. I like when they look at it completely straight face for the duration and say they really enjoy I'm that way, though. Like, that's the thing. I am not a particularly expressive person. So I'm not, like, a big smiler in particular. So there have been times where I literally am just like, let me type the emoji thing. Like, I look like a... Like this. But, like, I'm enjoying myself. That's just how I look. <laughs> just like you know don't viscerally react to things my friend was showing me attack on titan and expect me to react to the yeah yeah i'm not like whoa yeah but i like to attack on titan too i think that show's cool i think it had a lot of squandered potential but yeah some really good mortadella sandwiches i don't even know what that is that must be some billabong meat like some salties i don't usually eat deli meat that's way too healthy for me I, I like to eat trash. Okay, so this is the screen. This is, I'm not sure what, like if they, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but Polsky is like Polish, right? That means if it is, that means this game is going to be fucking epic. That is like, I don't know. That's like a gold seal on any video game is if the Polish are involved. This game contains flashing lights which may not be suitable for people with epilepsy. 
It's like how if you see someone is working on a project who's finished, you know it's going to be fucked in the head. Like, you just know it's going to be some deranged bullshit. Like, they're going to sound like they're gargling marbles when they try to talk. And they're just going to be fucking crazy. Oh, wow, that might be loud. Okay, I'm trying to get the volume levels at an acceptable rate. Um, let me know how this is. Cruelty Squad was finished? Yeah, and so is Fear and Hunger. Okay. Well, this is definitely something I wouldn't normally play. So let's see how this is go. I'm gonna go. It looks kind of cool. Holy shit. Okay, this has soul. Did you see that turn? I thought this was a Polish game, but we're in Tokyo. Holy fuck. We're going to Happy Rock. We're going away from Salvation. Is Happy Rock perhaps a... Uh a metaphor for like a crack rock. If this is bad, it will ruin my vacation. Well, that's not good. Okay. Incoming call, Happy Rock Sheriff. How's it going? Have you arrived yet? Quite a storm went through our area. A lot of trees fell from the wind. Good thing it's over now. Yes, I'm already here. You called just as I got out of the car. Listen, the crime scene happens to be near the old supermarket. You cross the car park, enter the woods, and go straight ahead all the way. There are signs along the way, and when you get to the second fork, turn left towards the last sumac on Earth. Under this damn tree, that woman was killed. I will be waiting for you there. And one more thing. Watch out for a group of crackheads. They're always hanging around the shop. A hooker. A fat guy acting as her bodyguard and three skinny junkies. You never know what's going to go through their stupid heads. Okay, I'll remember. Watch out for the junkies. Go past the shop into the woods and be afraid of Boogie. Exactly. See you there. Call ended. Okay, well this seems like my kind of experience. So these rocks are the save. Hey, buddy. Dude better get out of here. Some time ago, I found some pills in a wrecked car in the woods. My team and I took them. I took two, and the rest of the team probably took five each. They said after two, you wouldn't even have a stomachache. The stuff was mega strong, like someone had put a blender in your brain. Even Dandelion doesn't sweep you off like that. Fat Hugo was so mad, he threw himself at me. What does that mean? What's up, baby? I've been inspired. What? I have been inspired. Oh, I thought you said you've been fired. What What have you been inspired by? The cobra. Oh, no. I'm going to make hats. Okay. I've decided I'm going to make pizza rolls in the air fryer, and then... Let me know how it goes. That's not... I'm not going to wait three hours. Okay. Hold the butter. You're right. Honestly, when you paused it with the butter part, like, I would have eaten that. Like... Yeah, I believe you. Tried it. Thank you, AEF, for the 72-month resub. I appreciate it. I know you would. You... She hollows out, like, like, rolls, like, yeast rolls, and pours chocolate milk in them, and then, like, dreets it. I have not done that here. Yeah, that's fucked up. You can see how I look. My face is all bruised. He also kicked Morph, the poor guy lying on the pile. Then Hugo flew the fuck off into the woods screaming like a madman. Watch out for him. You don't know what he can do to you. He's very aggressive. Okay, so we've got Fat Hugo. 
let's let's see what these guys are up to. They seem like a nice bunch. What's your problem, man? What problem? You know which one. Show me your stuff. Maybe I'll find something interesting and do you a fave hour. Guess I'm going to disappoint you. I've come to Happy Rock for a different thing. Then get lost. You're scaring my customers. Oh my god, okay. They stole my soul. Where is it? My eyes. They stole my eyes. Man, put that shit away. It doesn't seem to serve you. Give me back my eyes, you thief. Uh, okay, and that guy's just down for the count like Dracula's homies, I suppose. I can't believe she's gonna do that shit with pizza rolls. What the fuck, man? Are we a cyborg? We have some sort of implant, but I don't know if that's been explained yet. Let me see. Oh, God. That's right. I saw this. There's a weird-ass aiming system where you can do, like... You have, like, a first-person interface when you're aiming in the overworld. I think that's really fucking cool. I guess that's what our eyeball is for. Notes from the Happy Rock Investigation. No current notes. Okay, so it's not something I have to read for background information. Maybe this is Cyberpunk 2? Maybe. Maybe this will be the best game ever made. Make a note. Okay, do I... Sorry, I'm trying to feel my way around the inventory system. Charges... Changes in the economy under the newly introduced corporate law code 666. All private enterprises are taken over by the NML. Representatives of the companies ensure that the public will not notice any significant difference in the provision of services and trade. The amalgamation period for all companies will end on the 11th of November, 2028. This will also, this is also the date on which cash will be phased out in the NML countries and replaced by points of social use. Many commentators have suggested that in reality, only the form of payment will change has happened after the introduction of payment cards. So what, like social credit? You think I would have good social credit? Probably not, huh? For inspiring the youth? Those pills are on fire. I'm immortal. Give me someone to beat. Oh, God. I fucking owned that guy. I absolutely dicked him. Hello, consent receiver. What's up, dude? I don't think I've ever inspired the youth. And yes, I, I do believe that must have been Fat Hugo. What's the lore behind your stream being into gnomes? I don't know. I just say stupid shit sometimes. And some of it sticks. Some of it's forgotten. Like, I tried really hard to make a joke about misogynists being, like, people who do massages. And that one never stuck. Um, but then you just go... Ooh! And that shit's like comedy gold. So you just gotta... It's gotta be stupid, you know? He's gotta say shit. Thank you, Werewolf of the Ancient Land, for the 54 months. Comrade, your social credit has been lowered for not agreeing with the party. Well, I'm a contrarian. That's all I can do. Hello, Papa Dap. Oh, God. So cool seeing unique concepts when there's thousands of games. I agree, but I can't say I'm a, f I'm a fan of, like, this weird... I don't know camera terms. It's like a fisheye lens when you're moving over sometimes. I know that's an extreme nitpick, but, like, the, the camera jujitsu kind of fucks with me a little bit. Hold on. Can I walk up these? Looks like I can walk up, but I cannot. All right. So I need a power supply for the lever, so I can't imagine I'm going to be able to do anything here just yet. Can I pick the gear up? Yes. It's a Metal Gear, specifically. I wonder if we're going to encounter any solid snakes as enemy types. Feels like I'm looking through a telescope. It could be a neat concept for a game. Wait. I can just... Okay, well, I guess I can't because that thing's uh, still closed. Let's go look for some goodies. My snake is more liquid than solid. Let me the fuck in. I don't think I can go in. Okay, what does this say? 
What do the signs say? The last... Okay, this is where we need to go anyways. So this works out. And these are some artsy fucking camera angles. Holy shit. Okay. I guess that's our employer over there. I see you have arrived. My name is C.A.C. How do I fucking pronounce that? Ciacus? Cacus? I'm going with Cacus. Cacius? 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 I'm the sheriff here. I haven't seen such a macabre scene in a long time. The victim is a young woman, a non-native. For the moment, I have not yet established her identity. She was disemboweled. The bastard also cut off her right hand, and I think she tried to cut off her left foot, but didn't finish the job. Or he tried to cut off her left foot. Sorry. The game seems a tad loud. Okay, let me turn it down. Let me turn it down just a hair. Woman has stab wounds to her back and is likely the attacker. attacker came up behind her while she was admiring the view from this cliff and assaulted her with a knife. I know everyone who lives here, and I am sure it is none of them. Since the introduction of the corporation law, there have been a lot of drunks and bums hanging around here who have fled the city to escape their work obligation. There are also a few local junkies who, if you probably had the unpleasant experience of meeting at the entrance of the market, they were always hanging out there. I'm Seth Vidius. Yeah, I saw those junkies. One of them was aggressive. The son of a bitch threw his paws at me. That's a weird way of saying it. Was he like a secret furry? I suspect you have met Fat Hugo. However, judging by what has happened here, this troglodyte Hugo would not show such finesse when it comes to organ removal. The other thing is that several residents have already disappeared without a trace. That worries me more than a dead outsider. I think it is all connected somehow. Recently, a group of religious radicals also came and set up camp near the old cemetery. The visitors are some kind of fanatics. They keep saying something about the fall of mankind and some dies array. Personally... I don't know what to think of them. They're not drinking, not doing drugs, and just holding some kind of service under the old cross or in the cemetery in the chapel. I'm impressed across the cemetery in a chapel. It's a rarity these days, especially in one place. Corporate law banned all religious symbols and places of worship a decade ago. All churches, mosques, and other temples were demolished. Even works of art that in any way bear the mark any way bear the mark of any faith or religion or discarded i must admit that you live in an interesting place i was born here happy rock used to be a prosperous mining town people lived well here the people had their traditions i'm not going to take away the remnants of that old world i know that if i reported one of the cult sites the next day heavy equipment will come in and level it i don't give a shit about all their globalization and unification eight or nine years ago the company sent people into the mine i don't know but they didn't look like geologists after less than a week of exploration, the mines were closed. No reasons were given. All the workers at the mine were told not to worry because the work would soon start on the biomass processing plant at the old fertilizer factory and everyone in the area would get a job at the plant. That's not how you treat people. You don't replant old trees. Tolo played Vampire of the Masquerade Bloodlines. I have, but not on stream. I also dislike how the companies have started to suppress human freedom since the reunification. But let us perhaps end this topic. We have a crime to explain here. Holy shit, this is so verbose. Good idea. And we're out of control anyway. I'll send some locals here to take the body to the police station. We have our own morgue with a corner there. You might want to take another look around here. I'll meet you later at the station. The building is the op is opposite the junkyard. When you go into town, be careful. There's some particularly nasty creeps and twisted creatures with tentacles lurking in the swamp. You probably mean the tube worm. Can I just shoot anyone I want? Can I be a motherfucker? That's a strange looking woman. Like weird and desiccated. Europeans love being verbose. Well, hopefully it's just the beginning and people will shut the fuck up and we can play the video game. Author wants to make sure the audience understands exactly what's going on. Yeah, it's world building. The corporations have banned any form of expressive spirituality. 
all religious symbols, yada, yada, yada. Um, people are trying to... Yeah, I don't know. Let me in. Shoot him? That would be unkind, and I don't have that many bullets. I have seven shots. Attention, water infected. I wonder if this is where we're going to see these uh, alleged tentacle monsters. Hello, cynical dude. Curious what they're gonna... Oh! Holy fuck! Just like that, huh? Jesus Christ, that's what good pussy's like. We've all lost good men to that. One inch inside and it's just, they're gone. They'll never play video games with you again. Okay, so I need to watch my step there. So true, King? Yeah, you know, only spitting facts. I saw... I, I know I, I said I wasn't going to do too much of the political stuff, but there's someone near me. I've seen a new variety of sign. They have all the typical Let's Go Brandon shit, but they have like five signs all saying the same thing. Ultra MAGA. <laughs> like, there's Ultra MAGA signs now. <laughs> I just saw this shit and I did a double thing. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Ultra MAGA. Is that like ultra violence? Like... Ultra make America great again? I don't know what the fuck that means, but it, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it sounds a little compelling. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting dickens. Oh god. I just got completely fucking... I got dicked. Okay. Catch the ultra maga. Yeah, he was mad. Good old Cletus was heard me talking shit. The way he scampered off. Yeah, he has the default Unity monster thing going on. I thank you, Zadok, for the 60 month resub. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. There's also a person who has Texit signs everywhere and has a yard full of goats. So we call it the Texit House. The Texit Goats. There's a. Uh... There's some creatures here. Chicken bake from Costco is shit. Never had it. Tags it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this must be where I use the gear, right? Can I... How do I use this? Do I just... Yes. Okay. Winning? W winning? Right at the border? No, I haven't heard of it. I've been in Oklahoma forever. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Heard a little bit about, like, Dragon's Dogma. And... Yeah, that's about it. Kind of been in fucking La La Land. I feel like I have a duty to myself to not... I want to consume political content. I want to read about the happenings, but I also don't want to, like, get brain-jacked by it, and all I talk about is, like, political shit. So I have to, I have to tread carefully, you know? Because I think it's important to be knowledgeable about to an extent, but I also... You are what you eat. And I don't think anyone wants, like, the Tolomeo political rally every night. I'm gonna try Rise of the Ronin? Probably not. Um, I still haven't even played the, um, uh, the fuck was that game called? Um, Wo Long. Even though, yeah, I have never heard of it in my life. Like, it was funny. Might make you a doomer? Yeah, maybe. But my name's not Daryl. Okay, where is this fucker? Wow, what a bitch. Tool is always open to new genres. My entire thing is I feel like... I'm not saying this is a bad thing. But it's almost like the opposite problem I had during the Souls days. Where there was a time where people would get mad if I played something that wasn't like a triple A Souls like, but now I feel like I have to play, I have to keep it relatively indie. I don't know. 
I'm not super comfortable with playing like the hot new releases, which thankfully I'm not really interested in like 99% of them anyways. Uh, what's going on, Joelle? Sketch of the symbols from a stone circle in the swamp. Okay. Four people buy Team Ninja games anymore. They're good. I just, yeah, I'm really burnt out on the soul stuff in general. I am not a Souls head anymore. Like, I played so much of it that it's... I don't know if I'm ever going to get it again. Like, I want to be excited about things like the Elden Ring DLC, but I just don't care. How long was your Soul Streamer era? So I started streaming Bloodborne in 2015 in July until March of the next year when Dark Souls 3 came out. And I primarily went back and forth between those with Dark Souls 3 being the most played until 2017. So overwhelmingly now, like the indie era has been way fucking longer than the Souls era. And even then, like after Souls, I kind of had like a long ass Monster Hunter stint too. I thank you, Charger McKinley, for the 56 month resub. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I guess we gotta go back and go across that thing. I should probably save, but I'm worried I'm gonna, like, step in the water and get owned. Same boat with Souls. Yeah, I really like it, but it's just, like... I'm not really saying that the games are samey. I think there's a lot of new and interesting bosses in something like Elden Ring to keep it fresh. I liked Elden Ring a lot, but, like... Getting diminishing returns on my enjoyment of that type of game in a big way. Remember the reparation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gazi Kodo, dude. You know, uh, toilet skin complexion individuals need to pay reparations. Uhuru Akwaya, y'all. Way harder to get... I don't know, dude. Like, the problem with Monster Hunter for me is I played fucking Frontier. And now, like... I like Frontier so much that it's hard for me to enjoy the other ones as much. It's like the black pill for Monster Hunter. It's not that I think Frontier is better than those games either. It's just it hits like the right buttons for me specifically in a way that the others do, but not to the same extent. It's like going back to weed after fucking shoving crack rocks up your ass. You know, like, weed's still fine, but it's just gonna be hard to just, you know. Can't stop streaming souls until you achieve the misogyny. No, dude, I'm not a misogynist, unless you're talking about the massages I give my wife. My food hack is complete. Show me a picture so I can show the stream. I just have phases. Like, I had a really long souls phase, had a really long monster hunter phase... Now I'm in a RuneScape phase because, you know, I'm a normal, you know, neurotypical human being. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, let me see. We're going to judge my uh, my beloved wife's food hack. Hello, hand the banana. And, like, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed Souls a lot when I was playing it, at least until, like, the end. But I just... Just lose interest in shit sometimes, you know? This... The cheese is not melted enough, baby. Like, I'm sorry, but this looks weird. Like... I don't know, dog. You need to get, like, a blow dryer and, like, blow dry the middle of that shit. It needs to be left out for three hours at least. I don't know. I like, I like melted cheese, personally. Are we hyped for Ender Lilies too? It's frustrating because I really enjoy Metroidvanias, but like there's something I'm weirdly picky about them. Like, for example, like I just have bad opinions. Like, I love Valdis story, which, you know, most people think that one's a mid-Metroidvania. But that's one of my favorite fucking ones. I ended up really liking the remade version of Death's Gambit. Love Wings of Vi. But like, I only liked Hollow Knight. Like, I, I thought it was good, but not great. And I feel like I'm, I'm damaged because everyone fucking sings the praises of that game. And I thought it was good, but I just don't think it was that good, I guess. And Ender Lily's like, I don't know why. That one just did not 
it did not keep my attention. I can't pinpoint anything. Like, I really can't think of negatives for that game. It just, I lost my, my interest in it for one reason or another. I don't know if you've ever had games like that where it has, you know, all of the things that in theory you like, but it just doesn't grab you the way you want it to. I'm not sure why that is. I've tried it twice now. I tried playing it off stream after the Joe thing because I really wanted to like it. Bloodstained, oh boy. There was a phase where I played Bloodstained on, like, the hardest difficulty for, like, a month. And it was, like, wailing in the gnashing of teeth. I got stuck for so long on some of the bosses. Like, the fucking gambling guy was, like, the hardest one in the entire game for me. The one where he grabs you and, like, fucking crunches you in his hands. And the chat at the time would post everyone doing, like, the rubby rat hands every time I dived to that attack. And it was so aggravating. But it was funny, too. And I, I'm the worst person ever because I got all the way to the final boss. Like, dead ass final boss. And I got bored and stopped playing. And I, I came back last year after, like, a four-year hiatus to finish the last boss. Because I still had my save. Because I thought it would be funny if there was just a four-year gap between the final boss and the rest of the game. Uh-oh. Are these guys friendly? These are the worshippers they were talking about. But I actually really like that game. I think that game is fucking awesome. I really enjoy Bloodstain. Who are you? My name is Mark. We are a group of people who share the same beliefs. We are on a pilgrimage to the last sacred sites that have not yet been destroyed. Our times are troubled, so we stick together. So that if one of us gets into trouble, the other can help. Miss asking for the next Bloodstain stream is a joke. Yeah. Nobody actually expected me to finish it. That's why it was so funny. Have you been at Happy Rock for a long time? We arrived a few days ago. Why do you ask? It's a bit strange that a woman was probably murdered in the township yesterday. That's why I'm asking. If you think it was one of us, I guarantee you we had nothing to do with it. Every member of the group has renounced violence. And certainly none of us would have taken another person's life. We shall see if you were such saints then. For now, stay put. Is this some kind of order? You could say that. I'm investigating this murder and you look suspicious to me. I'm not ruling out the possibility that you killed this woman. Fine, we will stay. When the light of truth illuminates the darkness of this terrible act, you will see we are not covered by it. Save your philosophy for your group. You need to stay at Happy Rock and that's it. That reminds me of how the meta when we played Secret Hitler back in the day is if someone said something along the lines of... You guys will find out later, like, that I'm telling the truth. That usually meant they were actually telling the truth. And then it was pointed out that that was the case. And then it became the opposite really quick. Sometimes I think about those little arms games we have with language. Get stuck on the little demon lady with the bloody well and kind of forgot to go back and need to relearn the controls. Yeah, yeah, I had to do like a... I played like a new save for like an hour or two to get back into it. So I feel that. Holy shit. This guy has way too much to say. The NML has robbed humanity of the prospect of a better... This is like reading ban appeals, dude. Holy shit. Private property has been expropriated under an insane law religious rights banned on the grounds of ideological neutrality for sterilization this is nothing but fucking communism and a new even more radical version the fucking puppets from brussels have created a hell on earth for society in small steps it is the political dummies who are to blame for the fact that no man on earth has the right to private property no place to cultivate his faith all we have is to work our asses off in the labour camps of the corporations and then into the mixer and transport it to the fields as fertilizer. Oh my god. Even if I'm beginning to lose hope for a better future, the tentacles of evil are slowly encroaching. Every piece of land is nowhere to hide from the forced conscription to the corporate factories. People here still remember how things used to be. Even the conscripted tend to close their eyes, but the old generation will die one day. What will happen then? The NML has its own clone farm where they carry out their genetic experiments. From what I've heard, the clones are incredibly strong and resilient, but unbelievably stupid. Perfect slaves to the corporations. I'm afraid if this whole clone production thing gets going, they'll start catching ordinary people and eliminating them. I'm going to make a game one day, and I'm going to have dialogue. It's like, 
yo, dog, I heard the motherfucking clones out there. Some whack-ass shit. Heard they're dumb as a bag of fucking bricks. Watch out, bro. Heard they got big cocks, too. And that's gonna be my dialogue. Hello, Perugi. What are we playing? It's a strange game I saw on Steam that I wanted to try. Who's this lady? You think I should, uh... Let's see how non-violent they really are. Sorry, I'm busy at the moment. If you want to say anything, talk to Mark. He leads our group. Okay. I don't really want to talk to Mark ever again. Mark my words. I'm not going back to him. She resisted. Shoot her. No, I'm actually glad she didn't have a lot to say. I'm not... Only I'm allowed to be verbose. Thinking I want to play disco. I kind of want to play that too, but not on stream. That would be way too much fucking uh, just sitting there reading slash listening to dialogue. <sighs> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm not yawning because of anything related to the game or you guys. I woke up at like 7 in the morning today, so I'm on the old man sleep schedule. This kind of looks like some scary shit's going to happen. It's a big old wide open area. It's my favorite game. He hates us. Only you, Sushi. Sorry. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't believe it. The Grief Seed Theory Part 3. We are imperfect. We create a systematic way of perceiving reality. Yet every day we struggle with the daily grind... Of biologically imposed receptors. This is like some weird dude, bro, like, writing a science theory. Like, seeing daily grind with the... Immediately followed by biologically imposed receptors is giving me brain damage. We live in a world of distorted perception. We see Kalauers that do not really exist. They are a wave. This sounds... That part sounds like Hellblinda. The Kalauers perceived by our brains are markers of the variables we need to interpret in order to survive. So why does the Kalauer Red seem more attracted to some people and blue to others? Okay. I thought, like, Sorrow Seed is when you're masturbating and you try to edge, but you fuck it up and you ejaculate and have no orga organism and you basically sexually assault yourself. I was... I thought that's what Sorrow Seed was. Hello, Max. How are you, dude? Learning something new every day out here in the world of indie video games. Why are you guys posting cats? Wait, what did that say? NML Biomass, it will employ production workers. I actually saw one of you motherfuckers on the road yesterday. It was like some woman with like a hundred of those fucking cat stickers on her car. I literally thought it was Jenna, but it didn't make sense for her to be in Texas. Sewerage manhole. I've been mining all my life and these corporate scumbags shut down my mines to hell with them. I like him. We also saw someone with a vanity plate that said hentai sushi fish. There's some weird fuckers on like the the uh, transitional space between Texas and Oklahoma. Okay, let's see what this is. Madness in the print shop. The owner of Inter Cancer Print Shop, Andrew K, went mad and the police had to intervene. According to employees, the man had a history of mental problems. The workers say they have been doing their jobs for starvation wages for many years. On Tuesday, the 7th of October, the owner of the printing house, together with his directors and the help of the security guards, chained 21 printing workers to the production machines. They were forced to work a 24-hour shift. So do you feel like this guy, like... Do you think he, he subscribes to the idea of a Shrigma grind set, the developer of this game? I'm not really getting that impression so far. You seem like the guy that would bring the Ahaga... No, dude. 
I was literally saying people who do that are depraved. Like, I may not have been a perfect human being, but there has never been a point in my life where I would say, like, porn addiction was the entirety of my personality. Come on. I took too many politics classes in college. Unlike some people. Some people, huh? Feeling this game is trying to say something. Is he like the type of guy that... Yeah, I... Well, no. I ejaculated on my mom's pillow. I didn't sit there and fuck it like a chihuahua, dude. Like... I just splooged on it. It's not that big of a deal. You're, you're making it out to be more of a thing than it was. I never vibed with that shit. Here comes the judgment train again. You know, Cooler Matt tried to press me on this too. We were at dinner at like a fucking fancy ass restaurant and he brought up the pillow thing and I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't give a fuck. It was one of the best things I've ever done. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Hello, how may I help you? My name is Seth Vitas and I'm investigating a murder that took place near a mine. I was looking for, excuse me, were you sent here by the NML Corporation? Yes, I work for the Ministry of Law Enforcement. I am an investigator. Changes the character of things I don't like. I don't talk to scumbags because traitorous bastards like you, I will have to close my business. The corporation has enforced its tax laws. Every non-corporate form of business is burdened with such tributes. That sooner or later, it becomes unprofitable. Novi Mundi Lucis will destroy anyone who doesn't play for them. But what do you know? You probably got a nice big apartment and a bigger product allocation just by being their dog. No, it's not what you think. I don't like the current reality either. I just adapted. I had the opportunity to do what I knew how to do, so I took it. I didn't get better living conditions, no extra allowances. All right, all right. The guilt-ridden man explains himself. I don't want to talk to you anymore. If I could, I'd throw you out the door, but knowing life, such a corporate scumbag will come back with some arrest warrants and make even more of a stink about me. Be on your own. Okay, so I'm getting the feeling that people really enjoy my presence here. This is like being a white man who's straight in t -Lex's chat. That's what this shit feels like right now. Okay. Got a first aid kit. Got some ammo. Oh, don't even hit me with the question marks, Joel. Come on. Morrowind is weird about text because the characters themselves don't say that much unless you click their designated Wikipedia articles. I miss Lex streams. I haven't seen her stream in eons. A sheep gave birth to a human baby. An unusual event took place in the village of... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Alright, a Texan man trying to pronounce a Polish word. Let's, let's give this a try. Polwialio. On the night of 2021 July, a Suffolk sheep gave birth to a human baby. The birth was attended by local vet Peter Orvine. David came to see me during the night. He seemed very concerned about the condition of one of his sheep, said the vet. When I arrived on the scene, it turned out that the sheep was in Leib Hour. Imagine my surprise when I saw a human baby after a C-section. I have no idea how this happened, but apparently David is a deviant. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so he's... The lore is that he fucked the sheep. Alright. Like, is that real in this universe? That like, you can do that? This part actually kind of looks like a Vetus game. I'm not gonna lie. Like, the... The viscous appearance of the metal parts is Vetus core. Maybe this is like Vetus under an alter ego. I need to go back and save. Like I'm worried I'm about to get my ass whooped. Kind of dawdling and not saving too much. So I'm going to go get a save and then we're going to go down there and explore. You can build 1,000 bridges, but you fuck one go. Vesting comes in clutch when your skin is dry. Yeah, it's good for like chapstick applications, but 
that's a scary proposition. You have to make sure you have your own Vaseline if you're going to use it as chapstick. Because if you're using like a a half-consumed container, you're just looking at it like, hmm, gee, I wonder what this has been used for. Do I want to moisturize my lips with penis? Now, for me, the answer to that question is a resounding no. So... I usually just let them fucking dry. Eczema Vaseline is priceless. Yeah, it's it's good. Turns out it can lube other things, not just wieners. Does Otter use Vaseline for her penis? I don't think so. I don't think she has one of those. She's really good at hiding it if she does. How far can tucking go? My dad has his own Vaseline jar for his butt when he used to ride bikes long distance, so I try to stay away from Vaseline. Yeah, that's perfectly understandable. I thank you, Post Prey, for the 46 month resub. I appreciate it. What do you mean, reesty ass stream, Post Prey? Vaseline is a no no for Femini Panini. I said Bug didn't have a cock once in her stream and she told me to leave, so I did. That I'm so sorry that happened to you, Half Talon. I don't think you should have been told to leave at all. What the fuck? I would have left too. Fuck your authorization, bitch. Explain why you need a butt vastly? I mean, that shit chafes, man. Oh no, we have a sad little girl here. What's the matter, little girl? My parents were taken away by law enforcement. That's, yeah, that sounds like what a little girl would say. Just like that for no reason at all. Before the system changed, they were, not you too. They were scientists at the Institute of Theoretical Physics researching beings from other dimensions after the... Pussy game, Dev. Well, I skipped her text. She doesn't like me, though, so. Tola, what? Characters are so verbose. Yeah, I just wish they'd shut the fuck up and get on with it. Spit it out. Person only knows how to write one character. Well, it's... it's that's okay. I wouldn't be particularly good at writing characters, either. Can you imagine a game written by me? Like, what a disaster that would be. Do you think the dancing Polish cow is in this game? I hope so. That would be awesome. I don't think it would be. You know, writing is a skill. It's a talent. You can't just go in there and just, you know, write decent shit. It takes practice. It takes a certain level of ability. Like, if you go in there just, like, thinking you're the king of shit mountain and you can just write whatever, that's how you, um... That's how you end up with weird, pretentious shit. Writing different characters is more difficult than it sounds. I just need cocaine. I don't think anyone should give you cocaine under any circumstances. Fuck, I'm not sure what to do here, guys. You end up with heavy rain. Like, it would be difficult for me to write from, like, a woman's perspective, for example. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't be able to write a good woman character. Maybe I could do better than Joe. But that's about it. Just get in touch with your feminine side. I don't have a feminine side. Where did the... Am I fucking lost? The street in that town looked like fucking RuneScape Pathways. What's up, Keel? Thank you for the 37 months, dog. I need to do Dungeoneering soon. Isn't that exciting? I can't fucking wait. Always poll women about their life experience. 
it's just different when you're not the one who's experienced it, right? You have to have a talent for being able to portray things from other people's point of view. I don't think I have that. So, you know, there was a woman and, like, she, she broke up with the fry cook at McDonald's and she was really sad, so she dipped her hands into the frying oil and everyone started laughing at her and calling her leather hands and then she decided that she was going to seduce men and give them the worst hand jobs ever with her leather fucked up hands and then laugh at them as their cocks started bleeding and threw fucking jars of Vaseline at them and that is how she pursued the path of female empowerment. Like, that's the kind of stupid shit I would write. Vic, a man of many talents, the best handyman in the middle of nowhere. T.A. Davis, creator of the Third Temple, rest in peace. My liver. Alcohol and drugs destroyed him. Your family doesn't miss you. Lie there, idiot. Said he would rise like Lazarus. We are waiting. Okay, let's let's see what this is. That's fucking perfect, Mocha. That is wonderful. That is exactly what he does. He's so fucking annoying. The most annoying dog ever. I have to show the stream. Look at what Mocha made. Look at this fucking thing. It's too cute. I hate it. I fucking hate it. Finished like two of the Dungeoneering sagas. I think Dungeoneering and Summoning are like more or less the only things I need to level up for all of the quests now. Specifically Dungeoneering. Like I have the charms for Summoning. But I really don't want to do... He believed he could support his family by selling indie games. DC Dance, the carnival is over. Bernard and Leo Cadia, they brought a lot of happiness and joy to the sick world for their grandchildren. Faithful to the very end. Syphilis defeated him. Thank you, Verticat, for the 26 months. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. 70, yeah, it's the last requirement I have for the elves, aside from summoning two. Fucking elves. Just, it's, the dungeoneering shit disgusts me. Syphilis can't defeat me. I started playing Rise of Grace for finally the first time using GS in Monhan game. I hope you're enjoying it. I liked it. People say it doesn't feel satisfying, but I liked Rise of Grace Sword. Apparently syphilis. I have a fucking syph problem, too. She's a stinky little dog. Oh, shit, it's the Wraith! It's fucking Banjo. Dude, I wasted so many bullets. North American aim. You would think this is hella easy to aim, but I suck at it. Okay, okay. Just make it up. Am I hitting it? Dungeons. I don't know if I'm strong enough for that. Okay. Oh my god. I need to not shoot for the head. Autumn, stop laughing! I'm not? That's Mimi? Mimi is... N no, he does... He is not capable of vocal mimicry. That's... You're lying. I have never heard him laugh like that. And the dogs are fighting? No, I don't know, dog. I think you're trolling me. I think you're, you're blowing smoke right now, Pegasister. A wife trolling? Dude, that's what wives are for. They troll the shit out of you constantly. It's fucked up. You're just trying to live your life. And they're trying to fucking poke your butthole whenever you're not looking. I'm not trolling. Okay. Haven't done that in years. You're just waiting for the perfect moment. I know you. I have to be constantly vigilant for your shenanigans. I think it's interesting that this mechanic lets them do fucked up cinematic angles without it being an impact on your ability to fight things. It's a neat way to tackle that problem. Authorization required. God damn it. 
Holy shit, I can sprint. This changes everything. I've just been walking like an asshole. What's this? It's Order of the Snake Scale. It's a very weird indie game about investigating a murder. NML Biomass will employ construction work. Okay. Ammunition take. Where the fuck am I supposed to go? Doctor said, my ear is most likely raw due to my body not liking the suture. That's way better than an infection, so that's not too bad. Uh-oh, Banjo's in trouble. Okay, so how would I get authorization? I need to kill one of these fuckers. Do I enter code? Oh, man. Do I have a code? I don't know if it's going to be some, like, secret fucking Fushigi bullshit. I'm not sure how in-depth this game is with its puzzling. Be the little girl's text essay. That would be fucked. If I don't go to bed, I will literally die. Yeah, good night, dude. Let's think about this. There's a mine that requires a generator. There's a hotel basement that requires authorization. There's a base that requires authorization in the form of a key code. There's a manhole that I need something to open to the sewerage manhole. Wait, I don't know if I've been here. Hold up. Hold up, dude. This is a Fushigi mystery. Fuck yeah, baby. 14 bullets. Know a thing or two about opening manholes. Yeah, okay. Your experience is not unique or particularly valuable in this chat. We have many manhole experts. Oh shit! No, not the rake! Get the fuck back here, you little a la -mal pussy! Oh my god. Does the dick not have a hitbox? I was shooting him right in the cock. Right in the fucking cock. Okay. Don't aim for the dick, Tolomeo. Game looks very moist. Yeah, it's almost like a Vetus game, right? Think it was a woman? I don't know. Maybe Tuck Skill 99. Uh, thank you, Yahoo Camera, for the 71 months. I appreciate it. How are you? Okay. I wasn't expecting a an assault there. It had booba. Men can have titties too. And I'm not even talking like hormone stuff. I mean, like you can, honest to God, have like man tits. First person aiming? It is. It is first person aiming, and I'm especially awful at it. What's going on right now? But the last one's a stander, I'm pretty sure. Men can get per gigante. Is that like a Neko Nya variant of Nur Gigante? Nya! Dun, 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 nya! Dun, 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 nya! I fucking hate Monster Hunter World. Okay. Where the fuck is this asshole? I know you're over here. I am a god. Okay. I've got a car jack now. Super busy? Yeah, dude. Uh, it's all good. I hope everything's... It's, I hope it's a good busy. You know, there's two kinds of busy. There's like the good, productive, nice busy. And then there's the holy shit, please kill me busy, right? Got fat dude tits. I'm proud of them. Very nice, Davian. I'm proud of you. You gotta own the... The movies. I 
I wonder if you can use the first person mechanic to find like hidden Easter eggs or items in the scenery. Like it's not used just for aiming, you can find goodies. That would be a kind of cool feature. So is there something to be done with this? All right, I don't think so. I think the car jack is what we're looking for. So let's think about this. What have I seen that I could use a car jack for? I'm not certain. Okay. You know what? Don't be a bitch to a meow. Don't be a pussy. I have to be careful here because if you weren't there for when it happened, if I had even touch the water, it's an instant kill tentacle monster. So this is actually quite precarious. It might not look like much, but there's severe consequences for fucking up the platforming. It's not really platforming, but the balancing log. When is your flop era, King? Your flop era is low-key serving? What do you mean flop era? Crowbar open the manhole. I already tried it. Just because you can eat off the niche game doesn't mean you should. I mean, there are worse things to eat out of. Okay, so can I use the car jack for anything exciting? Okay. Flop era? Nah. All you do is flap air, brother. Ba, 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 ba. Blinked it from my memory, put me in the retirement home. Jacking it. Yeah, we gotta find a uh, use for this car, Jack. It's the only thing I've gotten that seems like it could actually lead to progress. But there's like a, at least five different ways I could go. So it's difficult to tell exactly where I've been going. And, uh... What it is I should be doing. My pussy lips. I don't think you have pussy lips, Joelle. You can't just say that. Try using it on Boogie. So this is my flop era, huh? Is that is that the uh, term we're using now? Okay, you know, I didn't expect that to be... Sorry? No, you're not. Come on. <laughs> I don't think you've ever been sorry for anything you've said. Like, not once. I don't believe that for a moment. Okay. So let's go in here. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're kind of a dick. It's okay, though. Many such cases, right? Acceptance is the first step to getting better. Let's see. Proud the chat has been pot cock free. I don't know if that's been the case because it usually happens when I'm AFK. Uh, thank you for the 61 months, dog. I appreciate it. Thought Tolo had been flopping around in gym shorts for a while, and that's why Zeus's betrayal hurts so much. Uh, thank you, Jerg, for the 46 month resub. I appreciate it. Have I been this way? I'm not sure I have, actually. No, I don't think I have. Okay. This has got to be the way to go to progress, right? This looks... This looks like uh, it's going to lead to something exciting. Mothman and Martyr are the only ones keeping the ASCII dicks relevant in the chat. Now, that's good. That shouldn't be a thing. Twitch will ban you for even mildly overstepping. I'm surprised the ASCII cock people haven't been banned more often. Like, genuinely surprising. Okay. What is this? I see ammunition. I'm glad that the useful items are more or less always coded in the Vetus Vaseline. 
Those are some fucked up pills. I'd try them. No, you wouldn't. You can't take those during Ramadan. Also, Dirty Dan, be careful. Can I shoot this? That kind of looks like it's... it's. Well, I guess the other window is like that, too. If it was only the one, then I would probably try shooting it. So what the fuck is going to go on here? Okay. Let's take a read. A drawing found in the victim's belongings. Okay, so I have two bizarre-ass symbol things now. You're tracking mud. Please clean your feet. I don't think the people of this town will give a shit. They seem like they're kind of uh, just over it all. They're too busy snorting crack. Good evening, my name is Victor Umbris. I am the doctor, coroner, and sometimes veterinarian of Happy Rock. The last mentioned is out of date, as you probably know, since the introduction of the last company law, it is forbidden and illegal to own animals. I know something about it. I had a tortoise, never gave it a name, but I liked the bastard anyway. The day he died was one of the saddest days of my life. I haven't introduced myself. I'm Seth Vetus. What do you think of that? A real shame. I myself find tortoises and other reptiles an interesting group of animals. I also think that man and animal can form a successful partnership despite their differences. You know, after reading the note about the sheep-human hybrid, that I, it's hard to read that as being a um, something normal. What do I got to be careful for? Ramadan. I meant what you think of the corpse here. Oh, I didn't get it. I thought you were asking about the tortoise. As for the body, a young woman of about 20, maybe 25 years of age, she died of exsanguination. The wounds were made with a very sharp, thin instrument, but they are not deep. Judging by the fact that the killer had cut out the heart, kidneys, and liver, he was careful not to damage the oragans. There are bruises on the back and wrists. On the basis of this, I have constructed the theory that the killer immobilized the victim after inflicting the wounds. He pressed her back with his foot or knee and held her arms with his hand, waiting for her to bleed to death. The form of the murder was not accidental. The killer knew what he wanted. Looking at the hole, I did not understand only the cut-off hand and unfinished amputation of the foot. There is no finesse here. It is clear that the oppressor got tired of the inadequate tool. He made the cuts quickly one after the other. He handled the soft tissue well, but when it came to tendons, joints, and cartilage, he failed completely. The killer may have been spooked by something. Before I arrived, I spoke to the sheriff on the phone and was told that a local man had found the victim. He said there was still blood oozing from the wounds. The killer may have heard footsteps approaching in panic. He quickly tried to finish the job, but had already let go and fled. A rational theory, as far as I could tell, that was it for now. What rem remained for me to do was to investigate what was left of the victim. I almost forgot. The victim had no personal belongings except for a piece of paper with some sort of drawing on it. I put the paper on the desk under the window. Okay. That's a lot of fucking words for like... Bitch got fucking pressed. So do I use the car jack on her corpse? Maybe that could be a good idea. Wait, hold on. Can I open this up? No? I like the punching animation. Her metal was tested. I don't think there was any metal in her. I think she was a being of flesh. Have you finished your walk? Yes, it was long, but at least it was not pleasant. In the meantime, I have received a phone call. The corporation is going to put the whole case in your hands. I'm a little happy about that because the last time I had to deal with a murder was when I was fresh out of police school. It was about 30 years ago. My role is only to advise. Honestly, the only thing I can advise you to do at the moment is to talk to Gustav. He found the victim on the cliff and told me about it. Gustav, as everyone calls him, is a bit of a classic old man with a mustache. He's been walking around drunk since the mine closed. Okay, I know who that is. 
All right. None of this is, is relevant. I know who to talk to. All of the rest is flavor. I know exactly who he's referring to because he was bitching about the mine being closed. It's an understandable thing to bitch about, I suppose. Show the punch again? No, dude. It's just too saucy to show at a whim. So let's see what this book says. The Alright, this is the Seed of Sorrow Part 2. The Alpha of Chaos playing its blasphemous tunes has injected an unimaginable number, number of particles of warped self into the matter of the universe. They settle on wandering atoms, and when these atoms form matter, they infect it in unknowable and incomprehensible ways. Galaxies, planets, a rock, or a human being may be subject to a state of existence being that is currently unknowable, eluding our methods of cognition. Who in chat is the Alpha of Chaos? Probably Cifferoni, I would say. That's the easy answer, right? Cifferoni or, or Juancito? I need to find out his middle name so when he says something whack, I can say like Ju Juancito James and, and get, get him to have that shiver up his spine. I'm Seth. I'm investigating a recent murder in Happy Rock. I only know what Gustav told me from what I've heard from him. Someone stabbed a woman on a cliff and gutted her. I only know this much because I've been sitting here all day at the scrapyard and I don't want to go anywhere after work. Thought you would know a bit more. After all, you're the big business shark here. Whatever. Don't know anything more about this case, but I can tell you something interesting about the canals under the city. Get me a packet of regular cigarettes and I'll tell you how to get in. Okay. I can do that. Maybe. I hope. Sorry for the dog barking in the background. Pirated PDF of the schizo who wrote this shit post. I don't think this is a shit post. I think this is a genuine attempt at making something. It's just very, uh, it's very verbose. That's not inherently bad. It's just not necessarily fitting for a stream. Didn't hear any dog barks. That's good. I need to get over there, but I'm not sure I have a jump. Can I just... Uh, nope. Okay, then. I thank you, Nerdbird, for the 100-month resub. I appreciate it. Casual 100. Hopefully, someday I'll reach 100 more. I don't think that would be great for anyone's sanity. Feel like 100 is already pushing it. Thank you very much, man. I mean, look at Papadap. Where the fuck are these cigarettes? Hmm. Pop it up, ancient. I don't know. I feel like she's actually gotten significantly less unhinged as time has gone on. I can't say that about everybody. There are some people like Cifferoni where I absolutely feel like they've gotten more wild as the years have gone by but pop it up is she's only like weird in misa's chat she says some fucked up shit when misa's streaming but i'm no longer blessed with the uh, with the australian psycho babble are you gaming i'm trying oh well that wasn't very good i didn't realize that was like a uh, nasty cum Hold on, can I go in here? Kind of looks like you'd be able to crouch in there, right? Love when Popadev gets a bit unhinged. She's so funny. She can be. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try not to step in the goo. Wow, this woman is just sitting here in the mire. Hello, JLFW. Sitting elderly woman. That's going to be my character of the year in my game awards this year. What has happened to this world is unimaginable. It's a good thing Happy Rock is out of the way and the corporation doesn't care what happens here as long as their biomass factory is up and running. See so you're not another lo or not a local, another runaway from the city. Are you here because the corporation sent you on this murder and missing persons case recently? Okay. 
Missing husband, 71 years old. Name is Moses. I just need to skim and give TLDRs of the dialogue, I suppose. Sometimes I feel like a hack fraud if I don't read every word, but it's, sometimes it really is better to just give you, like, the summary instead of... And then my husband went down to the dock, and as he peered out into the endless sea, he thought, Wow, I sure wish I could be a bee. He had a fascination with bees ever since he was 12 years old. He admired the diligent work ethic of the bee. Now, they had no material reward for serving their queen, and he wanted to have a wife who he would treat in a similar fashion one day. He also learned to love the colors of yellow and black, black being the absence of color and yellow being a color commonly associated with a mellow attitude but a diligent work ethic. He loved the bees. He talked to me about them all day, and I loved the passion that he exhibited whenever he was talking about them. After a long day, his eyes would light up at the mere prospect of being able to talk about his honey-laden loves. One day, he decided to go and get his dick stung by a bee. Oh, sorry. Did I mention he was staring out into the ocean at the dock? Well, uh, I think he fell off. You should go look for him. <laughs> that is kind of what this shit feels like sometimes, you know? Just, like, pay attention to, like, the last sentence. The first and the last sentence, just ignore, like, everything in the middle. Oddly accurate. We need to find what this jack is for. But maybe it's just my Texan illiteracy speaking. There's nothing wrong with being verbose. It'd be a little weird if everyone was curt and just, like, short with you. Hello, Skiwi. Well, maybe, I guess if you were to have a situation where all of the NPCs were, like, definitely not willing to talk to you, it would be a setting like this. I do think it's a little odd how, in this horrible hell nightmare, everyone is extremely social. Alright, Gustav, my man. What's going on? The sheriff told me it was you who found the victim on the cliff. You can tell me anything. I'm not a corporate pawn. I just want the killer to answer for his crime and not hurt anyone else. No, Skiwi, this was my fault. I went to have a drink under a tree. I like this place. Sometimes when you sit on a bench, you can see leviathans coming out of the water. Huge beasts and also those red eyes, huge mouths, tentacles. I don't want to interrupt your discourse on the creatures, but perhaps you should concentrate on the murder. Of course. So like I said, I went out for a drink. I went through the gate and I heard some sort of screeching. I thought, ah, some swamp creature is about to jump out. I grabbed the bottle by the neck to prepare for a possible fight and kept walking. As I came to a vantage point under a tree, I saw one figure bent over another. And that's when it occurred to me that maybe the sound I'd heard earlier was that of a woman being teased by someone. So I shouted, watch out, I'm coming. Put your trousers on. That seems a little ass backwards. At that moment, a gnarled figure turned towards me, started to move nervously, and quickly broke off to run. This person passed me, but he was far enough away that all I noticed that he had glasses on no nose because the light reflected off them. The other figure contained continued to lie on the ground. I came closer, and only that, then did I notice the blood flowing out of the holes in the body. I must have seen the last few seconds of the poor thing before she passed out because there was fucking nothing I could do. Don't be upset. She was badly injured. I saw the body. She had no chance of survival. Tell me more about the killer. Describe his build. Maybe you noticed something else. Did you play Dragon's Dogma 2? No, I have no interest in that game. It seems to me that he was slim and about my height. I'm drunk all the time. That I don't notice details, but he was definitely not fat. He seemed to be holding a bag or a sack in one hand, and that's probably all I could say. Well, if you remember anything, let me know for sure. I have one more question because I see you have a gun and I think you are a brave guy. Would you do something for me? Perhaps. Say what you mean. I have a small distillery in the woods opposite of the cemetery. After what happened, I'm too scared to go there alone. Not afraid of swamp creatures. They're stupid. Put some coal in the fire. Okay, he's probably going to give me the cigarettes. I, I, I know what he's talking about, but I don't have the coal. Maybe it'll show up when I go there this time. Did you ever play the original? I did. 
wasn't sold on the original. I I thought that the DLC was fantastic for Dragon's Dogma 1, but I didn't really understand why people like the main game as much as they did. I'm not saying they're wrong. It just didn't uh, resonate with me in the same way. So with all that being the case, I'm not particularly compelled by the prospect of the second one. I'm sure it's good, but uh, maybe not for me. I only like my weird little indie games in RuneScape now. I do feel a little bit like... When a new game of that size comes out, that's all everybody talks about. I wonder, you know, I thought about it. And... Well, well, never mind. Neat niche game that you're playing? Yeah, yeah. Hello, Chumpsy. Dungeoneering King? Oh, I know. It's like the worst thing they've ever added to that game. I'm aware. One of the things that makes me convinced that the old school RuneScape player base is on crack is fre frequently when they talk about things that they would like to see from RuneScape 3, Dungeoneering is mentioned, and I'm like, why would you take the worst part of the game and fucking put it in OSRS? Like, you should be so glad that you don't have to deal with it. Okay, damn. So where am I supposed to get the coal then? Hello, Lacuna. Hello, Toss Boss. Thank you for the 50 months. I appreciate it. He didn't give it to me, right? Maybe I have to... I have more Pina. I think that's supposed to mean morphine, but it kind of sounds like something else. What is this? Is this his eyeball? Okay. Dungeoneering was the good. I can't stand it. Like, I really think it's awful. Maybe I'll change my mind when I do it more, but I just do not see what is supposed to be compelling about it. Maybe it gets better when you're really high level or something. I don't know. I think I'm just, like, fucking stupid. It seems a lot of the time that my interests just are... Like, on the absolute opposite end of, like, what normal people like. Tired Tolo? Yeah, I'm a little sleepy. Waking up at 7 a.m. is unusual for me. I'll probably call it here in a bit. Wanted to like this game, but I don't think it's really going anywhere. Feel like if I'm not gripped by it at this point, it is unlikely that that will change. Ready Player One would have been better if it had furries. I've never seen that movie. I have no idea. Slower noir game? Yeah, it's not necessarily bad, but it's just... I don't know. It's a slow burn. I like some of the things they're doing here. Solos Beyond Miserable? Yeah, can you even party up as an Iron Man, though? Or is that verboten? Maybe you can party with other Iron Men and I have to convince people to do like this awful cock and ball torture together. Hey, Sushi! <laughs> hey, Sushi! Kinda slow and doesn't have a clear direction and that's okay. I think it's alright for an indie dev to have an unfocused game. But I have to be really on the ball with like finding out everything like i need to figure out coal logically would come from the mine but i can't access the mine so there must be a, like storage of it somewhere else that i haven't found but i'm not really sure where the where the place to look for that would be perhaps in here maybe if i talk to him again he'll give me he'll give me some advice Feels like it's fun for people who like... Oh, well, I mean, that would make sense why OSRS people like it. A lot of them are, like, really efficiency-pilled. No, he doesn't give me any inkling on the coal. Okay, 
So if I wanted coal, where would I go? I thank you, PK Onet, for the three month resub. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. How are you? Mm. Maybe to run F2P dungeons? Maybe. That's like the one skill where I would want to be efficient because I want to do it as little as possible. You know what I mean? Hmm. Doing okay, Tolo? How are you? I'm at the top of the mountain. Hair is blowing in the breeze. Dick is hard. Where the fuck? I kind of have, like, the residual desire to throw up because of these pizza rolls Autumn made with, like, kind of melted cheese on them. I think that was grosser than what King Cobra made. Don't tell her, though. Pizza rolls can be a gamble. Well, no, it's like the cheese on them that's the problem, right? She'll never know? Yeah, it's our little secret. Don't tell anyone. I'll try it. Let me know how it is. Maybe it's better than it looks. Dip them in sriracha? No, I don't dip them in anything. I haven't had pizza rolls in an eternity in general. It's been a long time. It's awful. I have fun while doing anything with others. If you know what I mean, sure, yeah. Misery loves company, right? Alrighty. I think that uh, this... Yeah. I think I've had my fill. I don't think this is going to be uh, something I necessarily want to keep playing. I like the idea, but it's just, I don't think it's for me. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Take it easy, dude.